What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Dirt Riffs. You're watching the Dirty Death Podcast. I'm here with my heterosexual life partner himself. May Vizzle, too. And guess what, Daddy? We got a fucking special guest in this hoe tonight. Um, right here in the middle. We got. Oh, hi. Uh, yeah. We got Mr. Uh, Tony oh, hi. Here, <laughs> Mr. Bob the Gecko, my longtime fucking friend. So if you don't know who this guy is, I just want to introduce him right now. Um, so, you know, me and Dirt Riffs, we vibe really hard. We've been really great friends. And uh, this is actually the first time he's meeting him as well. Um, so my buddy Tear Bear here, um, we've known each other for about, fuck, 16 years. Met each other playing online Ultimate Mortal Kombat fucking on Xbox. Fuck yeah. like back when, hard. back when I was in high school. And uh, we've been lifelong friends ever since and fucking... I'm I'm so stupid for not getting him on a podcast sooner. So uh yeah, this is the first time we're having fucking Tear Bear, aka Bob the Gecko, fucking on the fucking shit. And yeah. uh yeah, man, it's an absolute pleasure to fucking have you here. I'm I'm so stoked Fuck that yeah. we're making this shit happen. You know, finally. We talked about doing a podcast for years and it's like, why the fuck didn't we ever just like start doing it or i should have called you like a fucking year ago to get you on here well what was the first one you you were gonna call it and I, we talked about this but those dudes like straight ganked it from you oh yeah fucking that was a long time ago so i never told you about this uh dirt riffs so i fucking this is like I, 2010 or 9 you yeah, wanted to oh, do shit. a podcast we we met these other guys online and they were doing a podcast that was called the pimp daddy love muffin podcast and it was a video game focused podcast where they would interview all sorts of different people and uh they they were boring and they liked talking to me and they were like yeah let's fucking get you on so i fucking went on there i did like a few episodes with them and then uh that they were just like yeah you know what we don't want you on the podcast anymore and like i was i was hella disappointed you know, it was a damn shame, man. I'd ended up, uh, they don't do shit anymore, though. So fuck them motherfuckers. I, I looked that podcast <laughs> up. I looked that podcast up, and that shit ain't fucking doing nothing. It ain't doing numbers. It ain't doing dirty death fucking numbers. We got numbers on this shit. We got people coming. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, like, remember, like, our iPods had the podcast thing on it? Yeah. Like, I don't think anybody thought podcasts would actually be something, but they are now yeah now. i see what you're saying yeah oh yeah and like i like and like you like back in 2010 we're like let's do a podcast let's do it let's do it let's do it everybody thought i was crazy so yeah, look at you no, now yeah full, full full circle i don't know it comes down to just not listening to other people everybody has an opinion truth you got to do what you love yeah. to do. And the biggest thing, like, when it comes to this shit is taking action on it and doing it. Like, it's so fucking funny. Like, I, I haven't told you. I don't know if I ever talked about this on Dirty Death. Like, how the fuck I even met Dirt Riffs. And, like, I was doing my interview show, and I was interviewing all sorts of different people. And uh, <laughs> I fucking, I thought he was in a band when I first <laughs> vetted him. I was like, this guy knows everybody. And he's he's got to be in a band. And I sent him out because I was spamming all sorts of different people that fucking um, all sorts of different people that were in bands. And I was like, yo, you want to interview? You want to interview? You want to interview? And fucking Dirt Riffs hit me back and said, yeah, dude, you really want me on your show? I'm like, fuck, yeah, I do. And so fucking he came on the show. <laughs> I went to do my research on him and I was like, wait a minute. He's just like a real like death metal head like he doesn't even fucking like, <laughs> he's, he's just doing what i'm him. doing <laughs> yeah he does the thing up so i'm interviewing a guy that does what i do and then we did the episode <laughs> and fucking we ended up talking for hell long and i was just like this yeah. is cool as shit so then um it just made hella sense to fucking you know what let's get together every fucking week or you know whenever we have time together to sit down and talk about fucking new releases cassettes we're buying fucking you know funny shit about bands and uh and horror movies and all just everything death metal related like you know on a show i feel like what it's almost like three years later we're <laughs> doing end of the year releases every year <laughs> it seems like at least the past two. Oh yeah and talking about the end of the year uh that shit is coming up very quickly and everybody has a different everybody has a different opinion on it but it's happening this upcoming wednesday it's happening uh, we're going to get everybody from the group chat that's available to get in there on Wednesday. We're going to do the top 10 death metal releases next Wednesday. 
Um, it's going to be at probably around 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, fuck. Yeah, that's about right. Time change is happening, so I was just thinking about it. But yeah, may so- I ask questions? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can ask whatever questions you want, Daddy. So mm-hmm. how how in depth does your death metal go? Like, does it go in the subgenres? Like, or is like this elitist like death metal? Like, where like so like know, like like because know. like honestly, we all know like the best metal bands around. It's like I don't know. We we know like Breaking Benjamin. That's one of the best. No, you're hella wrong, fucking hella wrong. The, yeah, if you, all right. I think he's right. I think he's clowning, bro. Uh, no, no, no. You're you're so fucking wrong. No. It, it it was it was mixed. No, it was best, mixed. It was the, serious. No, half the joke. best death metal band. <laughs> it was band. mixed. No, you, you got me all fucked up, and we've talked about this on this show. The best show. the best metal band. I don't know, man. It's hard to say. I Papa Roach. It yeah. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. self explanatory. I mean Papa Roach. Last Wait, resort. what is your so so? Do you guys go into other sub John? Like, does Deathcore get a touch? It's pretty much just Papa Roach, like and <laughs> okay, yeah, like some yeah. hints of Limp Biscuit here and there. Yeah, little Limp Biscuit. Well, cut my life. Every time they make a new, every time they write a new album, Limp Biscuit, we'll we'll cover it a little bit. Um, but mostly. Well, I like Papa the right shit. This is mostly a Papa Roach focused podcast. Like, you know what's funny? I I have a really close homie who who's. A uh, bumper sticker on her back windshield literally says "Live, Laugh, Limp Biscuit." <laughs> Dude, that's literally life, though. It really is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just get mad and break stuff. So, like exactly like what we're talking about, that new metal. Does new metal get talked about? Oh yeah, we talk uh, about corn. We, we talk. We talk, talk about, about a lot about of different metal, metal, really. Yeah. I mean, it, it 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 generally circles around like death metal and. We talk Shit about like everything that. though. Like if Vince Neil like shares a picture of his penis on Twitter, we're gonna talk about it. Yeah. Even though that's Motley Crue, that's like heavy metal, you know, or like hair metal. Yeah. Like we'll fucking we talk about everything. Pretty much. What what what's the most popular death metal band around? Like I mean, like that's upcoming. Uh, upcoming? That's his opinion. Upcoming or like most popular like ever. Ever. I don't know. I mean, because that, ever a, is a pretty broad term. Like you could say, Cannibal yeah, Corpse, Cannibal Dying Corpse Fetus, probably the most Dying Fetus, Morbid Angel. Yeah. Morbid Angel is way cooler than Cannibal Corpse. Oh, I yeah. agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, as far as relevant bands, though, like Morbid Angel, like I feel like Morbid Angel doesn't really do much anymore. I think they still tour, but not very know. much. Yeah, I not, saw no, Dying nowhere Jesus near as much as tour. Cannibal. You could probably see Cannibal Corpse four times in one year before you'd see Can or uh, Morbid Angel once. That's yeah. true. Morbid Angel was actually fucking out here, and it was on my anniversary. And I told my wife, I was like, "Hey, let's fucking go." They never come here, and she's like, yeah. "We're not wasting our anniversary doing that." I'm like, "No, like that is not that's a waste. Yeah, that's no. not a waste. Like, that's that like, a, like that's like a fucking cool ass thing to do, bro. It's like a double <laughs> rainbow." Like you, you fucking don't miss Morbid Angel when they. Mavis out. is all looking at that Morbid Angel flyer and just thinking, "Hell yeah!" Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Morbid Angel and Cryptopsy just fucking came too, and I fucking miss them, and that was disappointing. My fucking. And you life. missed Cannibal Corpse, didn't you? And I missed Cannibal Corpse. I missed fucking every band this year, dude. Like, well, no, I saw, I saw, Cattle Decap. Dying Fetus is coming. I, I like. I haven't seen Dying Fetus before, and I've always liked them. Yeah, I just yeah. saw them for the third time the other day, and they're it was incredible. Live, I heard they're very groovy. Incredible. Oh, you were just out there. That's right. He so yeah. Uh, Dirt Riffs actually just came back from Wrecking Ball down in Texas, and that's like a big festival. Here's the flyer. I don't know how well you can see it. It's, but there's Dying. Not Fetus very well. It needs better lighting. Yeah, but Dying Fetus was the the headliner on day one. Oh. Uh, let's see. Day one was, let me see if I can even pull up. I think I have the set time still. Cause if you know who dying fetus is and you mentioned death core, you might know who some of these bands actually are. I, 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 I'm a, I'm a metal head as much as I don't look like it. I, I, I'm, you don't have to look like like a metal head to be a metal head. Yeah. You'd be surprised, Um, dude. I go, I go and I see like fucking, 
like all sorts of like i saw a bunch of old people at the obituary show and that was like the yeah. weirdest thing like just dressed like you could catch you guys. could catch me at a rave trading candy with somebody and the next day head banging with somebody at a metal show yeah um let's see so day one was here it is i've been wanting to see angel maker and they always sell out when they come to town day one, one was uh soledad chamber gates to hell dying wish creeping death the acacia strain despised icon and dying fetus the last three are on tour and those are the only three i've actually heard i've never heard the other uh, i gotta check the other ones yeah i went and saw motionless in white like three weeks ago uh i saw them once a long time ago with a bullet for my valentine and lamb of god lamb of god would be the one i the the best band that i saw because we got there early was alpha wolf i've never even heard of them but australian band lead singer super young but his vocals are fucking brutal just like really good vocals knocked loose was there and, I like that. Um, um, after the burial, yeah. And then I so them. they got COVID. The one tour date they were supposed to fucking. Oh yeah, they were on the uh, Black Dahlia murder tour, huh? You know, you know, I never miss Black Dahlia. Now I go every fucking year, every time. So I mean, before Motionless, that's the concert I saw. Before that was Chelsea Gray and Black Dahlia and Suicide Silence. Yes. Fuck yes. yeah. Fuck yeah. I you saw know. I saw uh, Suicide Silence a couple times. I'll I saw him with. Out both singers current effects though i saw with black dahlia and i gotta tell you it yeah it was 100 percent the venue in retrospect <laughs> now but uh current effects sucked when i saw them it was literally an hour because they had an extra long set because after the burial fucking got covid so it was yeah. like an hour of fucking i felt like i was at like a fucking like that sick show or some shit because it was just <laughs> bass, 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 and kids just running in circles. And I was just like, God damn it. Like fucking it was just I saw I saw Carnifex one time and it was literally right after their first album came out. That's and that mu- must have been a good time to see them then. It was cool. Really it was bad. with uh like Belay My Last with Blood Comes Cleansing, a different breed of killer. You ever seen? Dude, this? I haven't heard that fucking band forever. A different breed of killer, dude. They had a. I knew you were gonna say that too. That's the one. Every time I talk about that show, everybody says that about that band. <laughs> dude, did they had a song called "Um Fucking Cornflakes" or something like that? I forget yeah. what it's called. I don't remember what it's called, but it was something like that. Yeah. yeah. I used to have the hoodie, like the zip-up hoodie with the Medusa on the back and shit. That's dope. I miss that. I miss that band. That's so, that was a. A choice nug from back in the day. So you guys can. And judge. see, wouldn't that be more deathcore? Would they be considered yeah. death metal? I, I would know. say they're oh, deathcore. So... I would say yeah. they were deathcore. Yeah, deathcore is cool. Deathcore is cool. Right? I'm picky about it. Yeah. But I I always refer back to the, like the MySpace deathcore bands, uh, Elijah, Joplin. Dude, Cowboy. you just said Elijah. I thought that Incinerate was such a good song. <laughs> I love Elijah, dude. That whole that whole first album they did is like a his, historical piece of hardcore and death metal. It really is. Like I remember listening to that when I was like fifteen. Like that job for a cowboy and a couple yes. others, and I was like, "This is as Blood Runs Black." Is wins a plague. I was maybe fourteen. I was a kid, mm. so young. <laughs> that's classic. I'm glad you said Elijah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's the one. That's probably the best one because you can't find that record anywhere. It's not because well, oh, well, they, they say the F word, I, I think in it a lot, don't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do actually. Yeah, we, so I think we, that's why you have to listen to it on uh YouTube. Um, my cousin sent me this year, I didn't even know it, they were still making music, but Rose Funeral came out with a new album. I was blown away. Dang, I forgot all about that band too. You remember My Children, My Bride? Nuh-uh. No. No, they were but, the they were the ones that used like the Halo song as like the build up to their song. I don't. I've never heard that. You should play it at the end of the podcast. Yeah, my children, my bride was good at one point in time. I don't know if they're even relevant anymore, but uh, they they were another one of those bands. It was the MySpace thing, man. Yeah, yeah, my MySpace, like, yeah. Tom hooked, from, us, Tom hooked us up with some great deathcore bands. I will say that. 
Yeah, Tom was yeah, that... dude, just sitting there yeah. fucking smiling at you when you. <laughs> yeah, like come check out these deathcore bands, and that's yeah, really that's what, what MySpace was for. That's why he made MySpace was. For <laughs> He's just a it. huge fan of deathcore. <laughs> it, it was. It was. It was. Yeah, it, MySpace was definitely more for like the alternative scene than yes. the rap scene. Yes, I don't know though, because yeah. you know who blew up on fucking MySpace too. Um, yeah, Soldier Boy. Little B, the bass god. Oh, and Little B, yeah. Oh, Before yeah. Before YouTube was a big thing, and he was doing the videos, he made like he made like fifty fuck because they only, they limited you to like five songs per account without paying. So he made yeah. like fifty different accounts and just kept uploading more and more songs, and then adding each account as a friend because they didn't like limit you. But yeah, li- that's where Little B's career like started with the. Uh, I mean, it started with the pack, but when he like blew up, it was fucking from MySpace. You know that was before like pack but yeah man that was a that was a golden fucking era but yeah soldier boy holy fuck i remember the first time i heard crank that soldier boy on fucking a myspace account and it was it was on somebody because back then they didn't it was before myspace music was even a thing and like you had to like get the whole fucking code you remember that to like make your myspace page you would have to get like a whole yeah and you had to enter it into your like bio or whatever and then it would yes i was coding without even knowing how the code yeah, yeah dude yeah and like fuck it, i remember <laughs> there real. was like this like broad that i went to school with that like she was like oh yeah add me on myspace and fucking i i remember i clicked on there on like her page to add her and fucking crank that soldier boy starts playing just on the background <laughs> of her shit and it, it goes dun, dun, dun. and i was just like this is the hardest fucking song i've ever heard bro I didn't even know there was a dance or like that. It was, you know, a thing. I was like, this shit, it's fucking hard as fuck. And then come to find out it's like a fucking, it was like a meme song. Yeah, that's pretty much what before it was. Before a meme was a meme. Before memes were even a fucking thing. Truth. Yeah, you right. You right. Holy fuck, dude. It was it was early uh, hieroglyphic memes. Yeah. Yeah, that that was like early internet days. Not even early internet days. That was just before, you know, Facebook and shit. But yeah, that was a good time, man. But y- all right, go ahead and judge me. You guys can judge me right now because, yeah, we're talking about everything. <coughs> Guess what I've been <coughs> slamming, slapping this week fucking while driving around because I'm always on the road for work. What? I've been listening to fucking uh, Dying is Your Latest Fashion by fucking... Uh, by fucking uh, escape the fate. What? I never listened to them, but yeah, I never listened to them either. Yeah, listen to that album, Daddy, and I'll tell you, it's fucking. It is. There's no other album that hits that fucking hard. If there's any, if there's any band out of that time, because all that shit. Yeah, no, no, no. Don't judge me, no. motherfucker. Don't judge me, motherfucker. I'm not judging you. I'm not judging you. You gotta listen to it, and you're gonna love it. I, I think I sent you a short video of me listening to it, but I don't know if the audio came through. And you said, what the fuck? Like, because I, I sent you, like, a little video of me just smiling. Oh, I did see that. I was like, yeah. what is he listening to? Did you hear the music? Yes. Yeah, that that's was, why I was that like, was what the fuck? Sample. Is this fool, like, sitting in his car just doing this right I, now? I was sitting in my <laughs> car listening to fucking scene fucking uh, pop punk fucking metal or whatever the fuck that genre was it was like if i'm I gonna put on recently sent me a song that i've never heard it sounds oh shit like... hold on one second it sounds like my chemical romance but like fucking oh you could just hit the mute on your thing and <coughs> walking around. say that again oh no you're good if you're gonna be if you're gonna be present it's all good daddy man look one at this second. handsome fucking dude man this i haven't seen a fucking guy this handsome <laughs> we got the we got the dave ellefson fucking view of him a minute ago yeah <laughs> he fucking looks great <laughs> holy shit but yeah no what was i saying yeah no that fucking uh that album they sound like my chemical romance mixed with like a fucking like metalcore band that's what i like about them and they did it perfectly I, if i ever listen to anything like that like with cleaner vocals, it's usually like every time I die. Oh, dude, that or, better. Uh, you remember Sousin? Like <laughs> AFI, early AFI is cool. You like Sousin? Twitching Tongues? Who? I'm Sousin. I... I've never heard that band. S A O S I N? Oh, yes, I have heard that band. 
I they haven't heard them, but I know who they are. Sick. And they were doing that shit in 2003. Like way before all them other fucking dudes. Do you know the song I, I um fuck me maybe, maybe not? It's like an emo song. My friend sent me it. It's like Never super heard. C. <laughs> fuck you maybe, maybe not or something. Not, dude, my friend sent me I'm like, what the fuck is this? <clears throat> it's amazingly it's amazing. <laughs> That's I'd have to look wild. it up, but, but it's I'm like that. Um, find it. Yeah, no, I I'm not gonna lie. Like, uh, you know, I I fuck tough with I fuck tough with that shit because that's kind of what brought me to like the heavier music when I was younger. Because, like, I listened to I I grew up in that era, like when Warp Tour was happening, and like there were all these fucking softer bands, and like I yeah. grew up listening to pop punk, Sum Forty One, all that kind of shit. And then um, I had one friend that listened to extreme music and he was like, yeah, he's like, you like all that kind of shit. He's like, that's cool. And he was like, check out. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> he's like, he's like, check out like Fugazi if you like that. Cause it was like a cooler kind of like band. And then he was like, yeah, Avenged Sevenfold's okay. And I have like two songs from them. And like, cause he had a computer, I would go over and play yeah. CDs and fucking, he goes, you know what's really cool? He's like, you ever heard that song Paint It Black? And I'm like, yeah, I, I like, uh, you know, fucking that song. Rolling Stones is cool. And he goes, yeah. you used to play it on your guitar. Yeah, and he fucking, and he says fucking, <laughs> uh, well, this band called The Black Dahlia Murder did a really cool cover of it. You should listen to that. And he fucking gave it, like, to me on a burnt CD, and I was like, this band's fucking crazy. And then that was when, like, I you know got got over the edge like into the extreme shit and i really i never really got too much deeper like i still listen to a lot of that scene shit that happened uh i liked a lot of post hardcore i liked a lot of hardcore music too um and then you know hardcore punk like that kind of shit thrash punk and uh then fucking yeah man like this i want to say it was like probably 29 2018 was when I really got into like the crazy shit. I didn't even listen to Cannibal Corpse back then. Um, I was really put off by it. I think I talked about it. I told you about this like yes. a long time ago. There was this one guy, because we were like in a scene band called Her Deadly Decision when I was in fucking, I was like 18 years old and fucking this dude came and he was like, always wore Cannibal Corpse shirts. He was all tattooed up and had big ass gauges and like, he just like, you know, he was like, I fucking hate seeing kids. I write songs about killing them. And I was like, man, fuck this dude and fuck Cannibal Corpse. Like, I was all I was thinking the whole time was this guy gets no bitches. And because, uh, <laughs> I mean, dude, you're you're that age. You're young. I have the straightened hair and the, the fucking white pants, the skinny pants. And, you know, like, I mean, that was the whole reason I was coming to the scene at that age. And like the music was cool. I thought it was all right. You know, and uh and then I started like really getting into it though when I got older and like I didn't you know that wasn't my thing that brought me to like back to death metal I was like fuck like I missed out on a lot of cool shit but like you said it's awesome that I get to listen to this shit now for the first time a lot of the stuff like I've been discovering over the last couple of years like going through a band that has a whole solid fucking discography and uh yeah that's kind of like where we're at man like you know this this show has showcased my entire journey of going from, you know, it's like Black Dahlia Murder to fucking Cannibal Corpse to all this other, like, older shit. And then to fucking, now I'm listening to Gore Grind and, you know, fucking brutal death metal. And, and I think I 100% agree with you, Logan. Last year, you fucking said that you think your favorite genre is brutal death metal. And I want oh, yeah. to agree that brutal death metal is the best genre of, of yeah. death metal. It's I think that like genre. that early nineties era, like, like deeds of flesh kind of shit, or like even that brutal, like tech death kind of shit, like defeated sanity or like, as long as it's got like slams, guttural vocals and blast beats, like that shit's dope devourment. You can't go wrong with devourment. Have you They're literally the heaviest band. Have you ever heard the band Heinous Killings? I have not. All right, I'm going to send you this. What They did one album called Hung With Barbed Wire, and it's on Bandcamp. That's the cleanest uh, play, place you can find their album. Fucking, so uh... <clears throat> oh, shit, that's a big spider. 
the, uh, the gorgasm that's another good one. Oh, gorgasm you know what's funny about gorgasm is i listen to them and they're heavy as fuck and and they have really oh dude i love good, gorgasm they have really good shit but their lyrics are fucking brutal so dumb. It, sound, it sounds something like pig destroyer yeah, pig destroyer is like more grind for sure yeah gorgasm but i love pig destroyer are all about like misogynistic like filthy fucking shit like they have a song called carnivore like it's, it's like it's your like, it's like your literal like stereotypical brutal death metal it's like split open the con there's you yeah. know like all this nasty shit but it's just brutal know, but the lyrics are like Night, 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 nights of the abyss yeah nights of the i abyss. like nights of the abyss like chainsaw to the pussy yeah that's where my brain went <laughs> that's where my brain went dragon pie yeah, I love I love that fucking brutal shit. It's just fucking it's intense. It's in your face. It's fucking you know. It's just Oh yeah. Just, you can't shit, go wrong with it, dude. Dude, I love the predator growl. So if if you've heard bands that do the predator croak, the one you know, <laughs> yeah. No, I have. Fucking um the first band that did it was that heinous killings that hung with barbed wire and uh the guy's name is Joe Joe Wolf. Um and apparently he's apparently he isn't doing too well now. They said that Joe Wolf is like he has this strange condition uh, that he's come down with, and he's in his last days. Um, but I'm trying to put out this fucking heinous killings tape on. I'm trying to put out a tape for it. It was put out one time on cassette last year by a Russian fucking label, and it hasn't been put out in the U.S. So I reached out to fucking. It's so funny. I reached out to the band. And fucking the guy was like, hey, I have the license. You can go ahead and do it. And I was like, no way. So I thought I had permission. I was about to do it. And then I found out Unmatched Brutality owns the fucking rights to them. And they haven't put anything out since 2022. And I can't get a hold of them. They won't read my DMs. I called the phone number. I've sent emails. I've done every, reached out on the Facebook group. Can't get a hold of them. So, And then I asked the guy from Russia. I was like, how would you get permission to do it? They said, oh, this other guy did it from another country so i messaged that guy and that guy fucking tells me fucking uh oh um i actually just got permission from the guy from the facebook account because he has the license i'm like so you really didn't have the permission to fucking do it and so yeah. i'm like dude now i gotta fucking now i gotta fucking you know hunt down unmatched brutality because yeah i can i can do it the way he did it but i don't want you know, I want to do shit the right way. Whenever I do business, right. I do it the right way. And exactly. This is a project, though, that is so... The guy's literally going... It sounds so cool. And it's so clear. And the fucking guitar is so fucking brutal. And, and I don't even know what he's saying. He's just going... Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> and I don't even know what he's saying, he says. <laughs> it's, like, so fucking dope, man. I just love it. Um... But yeah, I'll fucking I'll send you that album later so you can check it out. Yeah, I, it's brutal death Spotify. metal is definitely one of my favorite genres. In fact, that's that was like there was a good chunk of brutal death metal bands on day two at Wrecking Ball, like Stabbing. Yeah. Um. Devourment, Skinless. Fuck, fucking Devourment. I've heard those things forever. Yeah, dude, it was. Hold, hold on, where did it go? I know there was. I more. remember just being in high school and. Pandora helped me a lot. Yeah. Fine. Yep. I mean, two hundred stab wounds. Oh yeah, I love that. Stabbing. Band. If you have there was a lot, there was a lot of great bands there that day. Two hundred stab wounds is like the new fucking like I I can't even I don't even know what to compare it to, but they're like they're mm. really good. They're up there in my top fucking five. I'll tell you that. You yeah, that. I would say so. Uh, I will say this about the Frozen Soul set. Um, I don't know if you've seen this online yet, but it kind of went it kind of went all over the internet. Someone I guess wanted to play Magic the Gathering because they know that the dudes in Frozen Soul are big fans of Magic the Gathering. And uh so someone brought a deck and I guess they were talking to the band like as a joke, I guess. They're like, "I wonder if someone here will have a deck and they want to play." Well, they're all apparently they're like, "I bet you won't play it in the pit." Well, they set it up basically where these two dudes could play a game of magic in the pit on the floor while everyone was circle pitting around them. 
and it got recorded and sent around the internet everywhere over the past couple days. That's so hard. The fucking That's Magic funny. the Gathering game in the circle pit. Magic in the pit. Fuck yeah, dude. That's it was better sick. than what happened at that autopsy pit fucking last year. Mm-hmm. I forgot all I'm... about that shit. <laughs> I remember back now. in the day that um somebody played Uno at that Rose Funeral shit concert oh, played uno in the pit yeah dude see people used to do cool shit in the mosh pits just like what? hella crazy shit like now it's like you think like hardcore dancing and moshing is like it's like yeah it's like that's typical shit but like come on man this fool knitted a motherfucking sweater in a pit no <laughs> you know what i'm saying like just random shit okay though but i i gotta you got to refresh my memory about this autopsy pit that happened at MDF last year. Because now that I think about it, I can't remember. Was was the dude eating butt in the pit? He was definitely eating that girl out in the pit, eating, for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was like sitting on his face in the fucking yeah, pit. Yeah, she was sitting on his face. And That's was... so gross, dude. That's like an yeah. all-ages festival. Yeah. Yeah, the, that's I I looked down upon that, and then there were people yeah. like smacking her and shit. I remember that. Yeah, it was a very weird thing. That's very weird. Up. The push. Speaking of was... autopsy, you did see they just came out with a new record, right? Yeah, I haven't even heard it yet. I haven't. Uh, oh, dude, it's great. Better than okay. So now we got okay. We got, and you know what? I fucking I rescind my our battle that we had last week. I take it back. That Dying Fetus record is pretty great, huh? I I would say it's about even. And yes. there is there is some hijinks I want to talk about with that Dying Fetus record. Tangent. We'll go tangent real quick. Fuck, we're, we're going on double tangent right now. So, did you know there's a maggot stomp? Supposedly, supposedly, there is a maggot stomp this on that new Dying Fetus record. Is there? Did you fucking know that? I didn't. What does that, that mean? Uh, so I didn't even match. know death metal bands did that. If you want to catch, uh, catch him up to speed with who Maggot Stomp is, while I find these lyrics. So yeah, I'll 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 show you. Uh, Maggot Stomp is one of the like, I don't want to say biggest underground metal labels right now, um, but they definitely have put out a significant amount of choice nugs in the death metal hardcore uh scene i guess nowadays okay. uh cool. bands bands like frozen soul and uh you know sangui sugabog who both ended up on a label like century media 200 stab wounds who is now on metal blade um so they've they've definitely fostered some really great up and coming bands that have become some of the more popular underground modern death metal bands now so like I would say like what Dying Fetus and Cannibal Corpse and bands like that were back in the day is the caliper of bands that Maggot Stomp is releasing to us. Okay. Okay. So here are the lyrics. Tell me this. All right. This is the Dying Fetus lyrics from the song. When the trend ends. March of the fakes. Another fucker with a bullshit trend to feed. Likes and hype. We don't need another parasite choking the scene. All pretenders to the throne. Pawns and gestures to dispose, devoid of all integrity, minions of this mass mediocrity. When will the trend fucking end? Give these maggots nothing but torment. Stomp their lifeless faces to the curb. Crush their heads and make them beg for more as their trending feeds erupt with death. Reality comes crashing with a fist. Imposters, posing puppets, human waste to rot away. Swarming and conforming, their phones never leave their face. Okay, okay, okay. I feel like you're reaching. No, bro. Give these maggots nothing but torment. Stomp their lifeless faces to the curb. They said maggots twice in there. Or no, they said maggots and they said stomp, and they're talking about trending. And what does all the old school death metal heads, like all the guys, say about maggot stomp? That it's a hardcore label. That it's a hardcore label. And what do people say? What do old school death metal heads say about hardcore? 
that's not death metal obviously it's it's trendy though like that's what they say chasing trends like when i yeah i won't i don't know i won't name i mean but i mean fuck i mean that what they're writing about right there i i don't think i'm reaching i it sounds like Mm. fucking this and i like maggot stomp i'm not i'm not saying anything yeah i do too but i i feel like i'm just throwing out some conversation there like it sounds like maybe this is fucking dissing on maggot stomp right there and maybe how they're very maybe. trendy and you know dying fetus is some old schoolers yeah i mean you can't really com- can anyone compete with john gallagher anybody that's what i'm saying too like guitar he, wise like, vocal wise OG, uh really just right there. yeah like and, that's like trying to like that's like trying to like one up like are you gonna try and one up john gallagher well and here's the thing too because like people talk about certain bands and the crowd that they bring and it's like you know what to be honest whoever the fuck you are more power to you if you want to nerd the fuck out over one individual band and be yeah like you know like i only listen to that band you know like that's totally cool that's fine you know but fucking uh i can i can also see the other perspective where you're saying like hey like these guys like they don't even fucking listen to all the different shit they don't support all the smaller labels they don't fucking know but they don't even know what the fuck they're talking about they just like this one band that brought them to the scene which i think is funny though because dying fetus gets put in that fucking conversation when you talk about bands that attract people that aren't into the whole fucking scene and are, are just into one band yeah you know you go to a fetus show and there are people that are like i only see fetus every year yeah you know so well the other thing too you have to look at is i know dying fetus is playing a big hardcore festival here soon and they're the headlining band yeah which is very if you ask me odd but yeah you know hardcore kids like dying fetus too so that's cool to see that like there's no like elitist shit going on where it's like oh we're gonna just not be down with hardcore because we're down with metal or vice versa but like there's no other genre that's like this no there really like isn't. it keeps its own genre of exactly genre. yeah <laughs> but it's always like the old heads that do that shit yeah it's always the old heads like we've always talked about that kind of shit too and i feel like so gatekeeping is kind of necessary sometimes i think because you know, you got to like let people know. You got to let people in on like the shit you know about, you know, if they're into it. You don't want them like, you don't want someone going around telling somebody that Hail to the King is the best sevenfold record. Yeah. I, I, I understand. That's just embarrassing, but bro. Don't you have music is subjective. And like, right. That's what makes music, at least like to me, like makes it stale and just complacent is when there's no room to move because people won't, doesn't want it to go out of these boxes. And if it does, it's something else. Right. Right. I see what you're saying. I agree with you. It's just like, I feel like sometimes it's necessary. Well, like, I mean, all music has like an opinion, like our right. fan base has an opinion. It's just, this one's very, um, pushed or like like for instance the next day after the motion light when white concert i had a friend next day we're talking i know he bounced i even saw his tiktoks he bounced at a cannibal corp show we talked about he's like motionless and white got nothing on cannibal corpse and in my opinion i was like i don't think they're that great they're old yeah i'm like (laughs) it was just like i was like i don't think they're that great anymore yeah, it and just like, like you should have seen how that mad he comes got. down to like, yeah, that's whack. That's whack. If you get if you get mad about it, that's whack. But and like, just like that, like I like I I'm not even a fan of Motionless Way. I don't know one of their songs. I went yeah, because bro. I like music and I like metal. Exactly. How dare you exactly. fucking say anything about the baddest fucking band? <laughs> Song got his Cannibal Corpse I CD. Cannibal I know, Corpse I know. You right get people here. in their feathers. So upset. Um, and it's like, oh, my bad. I, I, it's I like you're not allowed to have an opinion anybody and i guarantee you nobody's gonna claim this but i'm gonna put this out here right here daddy here's a fucking cannibal corpse if you can decipher the message here's a free the new cannibal corpse album i'm giving away a free there you go andrew right now there's a code <laughs> get it that, Andrew. That's the word of the day i already know who's cannibal. gonna get it 
There's the code. I already know who's going to get it. It's, it's Andrew. You know what's funny is I, so I got to, in on this Texas trip, I got to meet uh, a lot of our friends that are in like our, our group chats and shit. Yeah. And, uh, I got to meet Andrew Crawdaddy for the first time in person. Yeah. That's and cool. That was, that was a lot of fun. It was really cool to met, meet him, meet the Necrovision boys. That shit was fucking awesome. I wish I could uh, there. Aren't there even like a lot of death metal, like people that play death metal, like the bands, the members that say they don't listen to death metal, like yeah. just so they don't mess up their own sound or something like that. Um, to maybe I they mean, don't even enjoy listening to death metal because they play it all the time. I, I can't, I, I don't, I don't know for sure if that's like the reason all the way through every time, but I definitely like when I know I'm going to be practicing, I listen to only certain, I'll listen to. I have a certain recipe for what I do to get amped up for practice. I'll listen to rap to get into the into a rhythm, and I'll listen yeah. to hardcore for the aggression. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I'm drumming. They, they have, they, so I don't want to draw too much inspiration from something else and have it sound exactly like something else. It's a little different with drums, but like, especially as a guitarist too. Like, I don't want to be pl- practicing and and play a riff and think it's hard as fuck, and then someone be like that's morbid angel that's why it's hard as fuck because it's morbid angel you know what i mean yeah i uh, i mean like yeah no no i can i i can even say i'll go as crazy as say every musician every artist has at least one good song yeah <laughs> no and what's so, even crazier is is all musicians are like that too every every musician has a weird quirk like that where it's like I don't know. Musicians are just different people. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't listen to this because I don't want it, but I love it. I love death metal, but I don't want to listen to it because I don't want to replicate what they're doing too much. I want to be creative to myself. Yeah. So, it's and, like, and I imagine you could even get something from d- death metal. Uh, I, I like, I, like again, like who's maybe the most popular right now? Would it be uh, um, Lauren Shore? I, I'd probably say. I would say. I would say in the deathcore scene, yeah, it's like commercially, Lorna Shore would be like a very popular deathcore band. As far as death metal goes, Dying Fetus or Cannibal would still probably be the number ones. Upcoming, I'd okay. say Frozen Soul is in upcoming for sure. Frozen Soul, Creeping Death, Two Hundred Stab, stab wounds. wounds. They they need to put something out. The Two Hundred Stab Wounds has been coasting for too fucking long without a second album. That's all I gotta say. I am a a fan of their shit. But it's to the point where, as a fan of their shit, it's... You're ready for more. It's getting stale. Listening to the same fucking songs over and over and over again, I, it's it makes me go somewhere else. And I, I want to listen to more of that. Build, do some splits. Do a fucking single here or there. You did a you fucking... Listened, you listened to Masters of Morbidity, right? Yeah, that, but do more. Give me more. That shit was hard. Give me more. Give me more. That's that's doing- the thing with 200, though, is every time I hear them talk about their music they're doing next, the word the words they literally say is the shit we're doing now literally shits on the shit we were doing before. Well, fucking put it out. I fucking I, I, I can listen to skin milk like a million times. And then, the, you know, but it's it loses its magic when you listen to it so many times. Yeah, it, it's. It's amazing. I'm going to send you this one, uh, Tear. Fucking, you got to listen to this fucking... Yeah, 200, 200 Stab Wounds Rules. Uh, Slave to the Scalpel. This fucking album that these guys put out is so fucking... It's The album starts out with drums going... It's very the, hyped up in the beginning. And then the guitar jumps in and it goes... It's so fucking sick. And then he's like... The the first song the first song kind of like the, the end taste. of it goes right into the second song. Yeah, it sets the so pace. it sets a pace instantly. It's so so good. It, you know what it reminds it's very me very musically of? rounded. It reminds me a lot of the first Slipknot album, like how that fucking shit opens up and just goes in your face without the rapping fucking like fucking all that stupid shit. It's, but I like. I'm not gonna lie. I have all the first three Slipknot albums on CD, fucking behind me, and I and I yeah. kind of like. I like their new shit too. I'd go see Slipknot if uh, if they came. I, I'd go check them out. Like it's cool. But 
but I've I'm, seen them. They ha- it has that like energy of that original. It captures that uh, lightning in a bottle on that. And that yeah. two hundred stab wounds is something else, man. It's it's some big titty music. It's like fucking something you can't not look at. Um, I'm gonna say not check this shit out right here i want to ask you what you think about this album and i'm gonna i'm gonna show the artwork for it right here oh fuck um, yeah let me see who's your favorite drummer grub oh dirt riffs dirt my riffs. favorite drummer yeah oh i am get the fuck out of here <laughs> no my favorite my favorite drummer i mean and I'd have to go off of who I've seen live. That dude, I don't even know his name, but the dude from Cattle Decapitation is He's fucking really good. crazy. And the set that he plays on, it, it was just like, he stole the fucking show when I saw them live earlier. They played Terrasite. Fuck, I take back everything negative I ever said about fucking Cattle Decapitation. I am 100% with, uh, I'm on board with them after seeing them live. I think I've already said this on the show, but I gotta say it again. Um, they're fucking dope. And and that whole all that weird shit they do. It's cool. I like yeah, it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, they're badass. But this this album right here, this In But Not Of uh by Afterbirth. Have you heard this yet? I have not. I saw we were talking about it in the group chat, but I have not heard it yet. Give this fucking album a listen. Uh, I checked it out uh, when I was out there in Arizona. It was just like on as we were driving from place to place. Um, You're making but, me realize I need to go listen to more metal. Oh, don't. don't bro, There's so much uh, out there. You, where you, it's you, it's booming right now. Do man. you have a Spotify account? Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll make a group playlist, and me and Dirt Riffs will add a gang of shit, so you can just go through it and put it on shuffle and check out all the cool and see what you're into it. now my my, my it... favorite um my favorite probably drummer of any band as of late is probably from belmont i like their drummer it's a band called belmont but hmm. their drummer is really fucking good i'm gonna have to check them out it, it's like pop punk rock so honestly really my favorite drummer right now my favorite drummer is chewy Who's that? Oh, uh, yes, from, from Necrovision. Necrovision. He's my favorite yeah. drummer right now. Straight up. He's my favorite. Another Necro- one that I can say is one of my favorites is uh guy from Festergore. Because yes. the thing he the thing he he said something that always stuck out to me. And it, as a drummer, it kind of just stuck with in my brain. You have to be the metronome. Yeah. You don't they didn't even need a metronome on that first C P because he was that good of, of a drummer. That, that that's that's crazy cool. That's pretty incredible. Um, I would, I, I like as I've grown older too. Like it's funny how I change in the way I listen to music in a sense of like when I was younger, I more of listened to the guitar. There was a time where I cared about the vocals. Yeah. And now, like now as of late, I enjoy the drums of songs. Yeah. Like, I've been like more patent into the drums. Yeah. Cause there's so much layers to a song and I guess, I, I guess one I've never fully gotten in depth was bass. I, and it's really underrated cause when you hear songs without their bass, it sounds weird. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It sounds yeah. like something's missing for sure. Yeah. Bass is fucking, you, you got a solid fucking bass and good, good, uh, low end fucking mixing. Speaking of low end mixing, there's something I want to, I, I got to talk to you off camera about dirt riffs. Um, but there is something, that I want to talk about uh, as well. So Dirt huh. Riffs just put out a single on Halloween with his band called Flesh Seller. And I don't even know you have a band. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking so he's been working on this project for a long time and they just put out their first single on Bandcamp. Um talk tell me about it, man. How do you feel fucking putting that bad boy out? Um, I was honestly pretty excited about it. It was, it's very nerve wracking. Cause like, I, I don't know, like you, li- you play it so many times and you hear it so many times and you're like, we think it sounds good. Like, yeah. Yeah. and then you like, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't been in a, like a band since I was in high school. So like I've been, I've done stuff on my own. I just haven't recorded anything in a long time. And I never thought it'd be happening like as a drummer. So that's kind of exciting but i mean we got the logo back 
while I was in Texas and oh my god, yeah. Do you have a picture? It's right here. That shit looks hard. Pauling Visions did a really good oh. job. I gave him an idea what I came up with and this is what he gave me and I I, I thought he captured what I came up with really well. Yeah, it's the fucking you got the eyes and then it's a bunch of bones and like fucked up shit. All drippy and up. fleshy. Yeah, all drippy and in the cellar like looking into it like it's I love fun. that it's like slightly legible. That's what we I, wanted. That's what I'm going to say. I can kind of read it. Yeah. <laughs> but we didn't want it to be completely legible, but we didn't want it to be like someone just spit on a piece of paper and said that's our logo, you know? Yeah, like fucking X A L V G whatever the fuck they're called. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm glad you brought it up, dude. Yeah. I, I hope every anyone who's listened to it enjoys it. I mean, oh yeah, we oh, have yeah. we have fun doing it. We have more songs for the. That's just one song for the demo. And link in the description if you haven't heard the new Flesh Seller le- yet. Fucking, you gotta listen to this shit. For fans of fucking, um, first off, old school death obituary. Fucking, uh, for fans of like fucking you know more fast um and brutal shit like the newer shit it's it's like a love letter to like all the dope shit from the fucking 90s like uh incantation yeah. fucking i hear i hear all this shit in here but i hear like a modern fucking sound coming out of it and catchy fucking riffs amazing fucking vocals on this shit like that's the vocals fucking make that shit stick out and the way that you switch up shit uh, on the drums you switch the pace up multiple times in this shit it's it showcases like it makes me want to hear more from what the fuck you guys are doing like i want to i want to hear a fully not fully fleshed out demo of flesh <laughs> seller because it's fucking it's really something special that you guys got going on man and and i know you've been working on it for a real fucking long time Thanks, man. Yeah, I really appreciate that. That's fucking awesome, dude. I, I'm glad you noticed the the time change because in that song, because like, what's funny is that slow part where it goes into that fast back and forth uh, snare kick beat. Uh, it was slow. We didn't. I didn't do that until before, like a week before we recorded that. I was like, "Yo, this would sound way cooler if I just turned it into like a circle pit part," yeah. <laughs> like. It's just like literally every part of that song, I I feel like you can mosh any it's it, it, it's like mosh death metal for like the old heads. I feel like yeah, like that's what it sounds like, dude. Like like, it's like like there's no you couldn't possibly hardcore to hardcore dance to that, and I no. feel like old heads old heads are like that's tight People <laughs> you know what i mean like around. not that i'm like not that i'm like we're aiming at that or by any means but like <laughs> it's pit de- in no. a in a like very <clears throat> i don't want to say oversaturated genre nowadays there's so many different styles when it comes to metal <laughs> like, like you were asking earlier um like death metal just scrapes the surface of what is out there now like grindcore hardcore yeah fucking there's just uh, like eternal champion was one of the bands i saw this weekend and they're just like a straight up heavy metal band with like some fucking old school heavy metal singing you know what i mean like there's a there's all kinds of different stuff out there and uh i kind of wanted to not pigeonhole ourselves into you know oh this is a hardcore band or this is uh this is a slam band or you know what i mean i wanted it to yeah. be distinct like this is a death metal project so well i i just did like again it's the only genre that really doesn't allow itself to step out of like yes. like there's there's rap country and country rap yeah i see what you're saying yeah exactly it's crazy yeah death metal kind of does that to itself but and like that sounds like like it, let's be real like that doesn't sound the greatest thing to be like, Oh, I listen to country rap or I listen to rap country and there's yeah. not nothing wrong, but like, it's like, ew, that's, that's sounds very... like a terrible sandwich put together. Imagine yeah, a rap yeah. country elitist. I oh only God. listen to rap country <laughs> and I only, I only listen, listen to Hank Trill. Yeah. I only listen to Hank Trill and, and I'll tell you Lil Nas, his early stuff was okay. But <laughs> hey, no, I only listen to Haystack. 
<laughs> I don't even know who that is. I, I know who Haystack know. is. You don't want to know who Haystack is, bro. <laughs> you don't want to know Who's who Haystack fucking, is. Who's that fucking, like, Donald Trump rapper with the fucking sideburns from, like, Florida? You know who you I'm talking about? Riff Raff? No, no, no. He There's, like, a guy that's, like, he drives, like, a big fucking Hummer that has MAGA on the side of it in his videos. <laughs> like, it's like a fucking... That sounds terrible. Yeah, that is like, terrible, bro. That's a real thing. <laughs> Like it's a real thing. That's when you say country rap. That's one of the first things that comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, that is crazy though that you mentioned that because, like, I mean, I'm assuming you you're not like you don't listen to death metal often. I I, I listen to it, not a lot. Like, like you don't it, seek, you don't seek a, it out. You don't necessarily it's more like, seek like, it out. Like, because like obviously I have knowledge. You've just listened to like, oh, I've heard that band or I listen to that. Right. Like, right. It's just um. It's not on the head of like when I wake up in the morning. I guess I'm not. Yeah. I, I, my, my my soul's more empty than usual. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be all but, um, fair. No, yeah. I, you're, you're um, I'm not as late, it. though. We're gonna that's get fair. I, I'm, I, no, I'm, like, I'm curious. No. We, I, I, that's a very like astute observation for someone who like is like, I don't want to say like not, co- you know what I mean? You're not completely like inconsistent. You know stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. But well, it's not I've like completely gonna... relevant to you. Yeah. Well, well, like, I like now, like, in days, like, I was telling him to my friend that literally, uh, like, I'm I'm not going to say names, but I am going to do a little slight promo because I'm not saying his name, but he's telling me how he has a song with a decently known rapper named Joel Ortiz. And uh, I was like, bro, he's like, I can't wait for it to come out. I'm like, man, there's so much music that consistently comes out. I can't keep up with it. Yeah. Like you just said, you have a new song. Like I'm gonna listen to it, but it's just so much music. Like yeah, not just metal, just in general, so much music. Right. It's so over oversaturated. Yeah. There's so many ways it to does, get it out. It does become oversaturated. Oh yeah. So that's what makes it even cool when, like, say this po- podcast and your music gets out that way, because it's not easy to get music out to the right. public mainstream. Right. Like that's besides the- maybe somebody what getting a Spotify the um suggestion or something or like you know like there's not like blog websites like back in the day where you would go on a blog website and people would be like all like on one whole blog talking about this new metal band yeah so what's funny is how i did it back in the day there probably is but what my i had like a formula for that kind of shit back in the day because we were talking about myspace right so you would go to like the best band what your opinion was of the best band so like back then maybe let's say it was job for a cowboy you'd go to their page right and you'd look at all the bands that are following them or like friends with them it's like oh okay i'm gonna listen to ed gein i'm gonna listen to psyopis i'm gonna listen all these other (laughs) bands the acacia strain or whatever you know what i mean like all these other bands because you think they're like directly related to this band somehow so like then you just end up finding out like the all those bands that I just named are completely different from each other. So it's crazy. Yeah, that, like that that was like kind of like my formula back then. I remember I remember those days fondly because that's how I kind of figured out what kind of music I did like in that tree. And especially metal, you as a drummer, I would imagine like your taste doesn't just like you love death metal, but I imagine it goes different places. Oh, that dude, I listen to like all kinds of stuff. People would be like, oh, you listen to that? The crazy yeah. thing like, I can't is believe you listen to that. Dirt Riff started out as a fucking guitarist, too. and now he's I've been playing, playing guitar since I was like 13 years old. <laughs> so like over half my life I've been he, playing guitar. He, damn you, artsy. Damn he, you, artsy. He man. has the Randy Rhodes. <laughs> damn you, artsy, he says. Hell yeah. He has the Randy Rhodes Flying V right behind him. Like he I, got the, I got the Dimebag Daryl guitar down here, and too. And the Dimebag guitar, yeah. That's wild. What the fuck? Yeah. He killed Dimebag Daryl and took his guitar. No, that's that's a horrible joke. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's a horrible terrible. joke. Oh, get, get the <laughs> fuck? That, that took a dark this. turn. <laughs> I gotta get in here. Oh, my God. No, yeah, let's, I've been... Let's I've just, just been have in... a super joint ritual right now. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I've just been, like, a musician for over half my life, just always wanting to do this shit, but never really having the time. I mean, I got, like, a kid and shit, so. Yeah. It's, it's like, not 
not easy to find time to do it all the time. And just keep to the passion. If it's a passion of yours. You know, oh yeah. But... I, I've, I've learned at 32 years old, I've learned that being a musician means you're going to be broke at some point. <laughs> straight up you're not you're gonna be down on your luck financially for sure <laughs> at some point or another but you yeah, know that's uh, just part of the struggle man i i mean i have a couple friends i would i would even that's sad i don't i should know their name but my friend has a metal band and he headline shows here and like um goes on, like around tour and stuff Huh. We've been to Texas and everything. What kind of what's your drum set? What brand is your drum set? Oh, my drum set's a fucking Frankenstein, man. I, I found it on the Facebook classifieds or Craigslist or something for 150 bucks. Uh -huh. And it's just like a regular you know, like basic ass drum kit. I mean, I don't even know what the brand C B C B drums. Dude, what like 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 I am just throwing this out, but what what if you get like a sponsor for a drum set? Because I have a friend that works for um I don't know if you know drum set band like brands very well, but it's like S G V or something. Oh or, yeah. Oh S J V. Or, yeah, he where he works like for the okay, he's a drummer. He, he he I've known this person since I was like a little kid. He showed me ska music. I went to metal. He still loves ska music. <laughs> it's okay. it's amazing that he still plays and listens to ska music. <laughs> the, still, what's amazing is ska music has lived for so yeah, long. They still do it. I didn't even know that that was still a thing. <laughs> well, well, like when I was at the knock when knock loose was playing, I went to my cousin because he's the he's like going to metal shows more than I am now, and I turned to him like this is just um aggressive ska music. <laughs> <laughs> No, to give you an idea, I actually just went to the last show I went to before this Texas trip for this festival was uh, Suicide Boys and Ghost Man. Oh, that's, yeah, that's cool. I saw, dude, they're surprisingly really good live. I saw them yes. last year. Yeah. And, and they, you know what's funny is I hated on, I, okay, I didn't hate on Suicide Boys. I just wouldn't listen to it because I knew everyone was listening to it. And it was like, you know, when something seems like it's all hype and you're like, now I don't want to be a part of it because everybody likes it. The the same cousin I went to the metal show, we went to the Suicide Boy show. That's the whole point of the metal. I was like, bro, I don't have like I don't really have money for a show. He goes, I'll get your tickets since you bought my Suicide Boys. So we went last year, and he was like, dude, there's so many kids here. And I'm like, if I was a band, I'd want kids. I don't want old people. I want kids. Like you want if you want to see good moshing, you're gonna see teenagers just being just I they think they're invincible in yeah they think they're invincible they I haven't want, had I an inkling of of death thought into their mind yet i want all the <laughs> saggy titties coming out in my crap i want them <laughs> raisin titties coming out yeah i don't think <laughs> anybody like like like, it's the, like that's the thing like i don't think anybody wants like old people at their show like and there is bands and demographic for that yeah yeah i agree <laughs> i agree and there's nothing wrong with older people going to shows. It's just like, like you said, Suicide Boys. Like they, it was kids. Like and it was rowdy. Like it was, yeah, it was kids. Even when I was there, I was like, dang, I feel like the oldest person here, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got all, I got there. I got in for free. I didn't have to buy my ticket, and we somehow managed to get floor passes for Wait, all. Wait, you just five. recently saw him? Yes. So you're telling me you saw Cemetery? Yeah. Fucking cemetery is amazing. They're Fuck one of my cemetery favorites. Cemetery was there. Really? Fucking Suicide Boys. I it love was, Cemetery. Uh, we we talking about cemetery. country rap? We talking about Boonie country rap? That so, is the most amazing country you rap. You know I've what's ever heard. funny about that is uh, I can our, see. Yeah, I can see why you say that. Mike, our homie Mike, I guess, was trying to do a release for them, or I don't know how. I, I don't want to speak for him or anything, but Barbaric Brutality had reached out. to Oh cemetery. yeah, he is a big fan. He is a he's big a fan. huge fan of him, and it was before he blew up. It was like just when he started to go viral a bit on the internet, and he was telling me he's like, "Dude, I messaged that kid. What? Like, I fuck with what you so do," and uh, he didn't fucking. I guess like some. I don't know. He maybe he talked to him or something. But I I know they didn't end up doing something, but that would have been so badass if Barbaric Brutality would have collabed with fucking Cemetery. Right. Well, isn't Cemetery like a recluse? 
Yeah, he's up like, in like, but he's up in Sacramento. He's like right yeah. there by Barbaric Brutality. Like, fuck. But yeah. he's in the boonies, right? Like, he's like up, he's straight up at a place where like he shoots you. Like, it's like humble. It's like the Ashley Forest. Like, you're have, gonna disappear. You see all the guns those kids have when they go live. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, have you seen them live? They go Dude, live. they're so they're, they're so awesome. I'm like, with, I'm like, like this is the future of, of rap. This is the future. <laughs> this of is rap. the future of rap. <laughs> it's like. It's. I remember the first time I heard Little Peep, and I was like, "That's not gonna fucking. Nobody's gonna like this." And, and then, then everyone loved it. Yeah. And then I heard Cemetery, and I was like, "Well, I guess people are gonna like this shit because I don't." Even I will know say, what the fuck I'm listening to. I've been. A, I I liked. I liked Ghostman and Suicide Boys and Freddie Dread before I saw them. Don't and like Ramirez and shit. Ghostman. I want to tell you, dude. Something. I love Ghostman. Yeah, Ghostman well, is. A, he is like the modern day, and I say modern day very loosely because Marilyn Manson is still relevant, but he's like Marilyn Manson. No. Um, there was there's a video of me. Well, I guess you could say that, but I'm gonna tell you this, man. And I'm gonna put it like this. Um, there was a show that I fucking did, and I have a video on my YouTube that I have I have un unlisted. And fucking this was Did you do a ghost main disc? You did a ghost main disc, no, didn't you? Dude, oh, okay. No, I'm going further back. Before ghost main existed, fucking there was a guy named White Django. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's you. Oh, the fucking white Django. I was the first person to do that screaming, high energy shit, fucking live. I did this shit years ago, back when I was a fucking rapper. I did that shit years ago. I was doing live shows. You know what I didn't do? Is I wasn't good at networking and I didn't know how to fucking record shit. And I met a couple people that were putting me on to do shows. So I go to this one show. I fucking finish it. I walk out of the show and these fucking two kids come up to me. And they say, man, that shit was fucking badass that you fucking, you know, that that show was killer. I'd never heard anybody do the screaming shit with hip hop at the same fucking time. One of the kids names was fucking um, one of the kids names was Flex Show Maru. And the other kid <laughs> went on to be fucking Ghost Main. What? Get the fuck out of here. That's crazy. I fuck with Ghost Man. That shit's hard. Those motherfuckers, bro. Those motherfuckers, bro. Took my sound and turned it into something different. There's another rapper that did it named Kill Station at that same time. And there was another guy I was heavily like talking to at that time about getting out and doing a show named Prohibio. And he was a producer. And fucking Prohibio uh, produced for Xavier Wolf at that time. And yeah. this was, I'm talking 20, 2015, 2016. So this was, you know, years ago before all the shit blew up. But fucking, I, I fucking influenced a lot of these motherfuckers, dude. This was before XXX Tentacion even came out because he was part of that big hype, like screaming shit. This was before Scar Lord came out, like all those dudes. And, um, you know, I, I remember I was like, I was the closer. They used to pull me out at fucking shows all the time. <laughs> And then, uh, and then I just, I became inactive. I just like, I didn't have a way to fucking record shit. Fucking I, my producer stopped fucking with me at the time. Cause I was too ignorant and I was stupid. I was, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was stupid. Like I didn't, I was a youngster. I thought I had fucking all this shit. I've talked about this a couple times with people, probably in private. I don't think I've ever aired this out like on, on a fucking actual podcast, but White Django was the fucking that I had. I could have had my run. And this is part of the reason why I didn't do music. And that's why I started doing the podcast shit instead, because by the time I figured out how to fucking do the music, I was like, fuck, well, now I'm old now. I can't jump around like I, I fucking got a family and kid. And like, I don't want to fucking, you know, do all this crazy shit anymore like I used to. I'm, you know, I want to drink a couple beers and kick back and be a platform for other people because I didn't have somebody you know, that would, that could have put me on the right path at that time with my music. I, and I didn't know how to look for it. And I, I, I would, I would say you were definitely ahead of a time with your song. I, I don't know why, but your, your home, I always remember your homie too. Your, Who your big it? old homie. 
the big old homie. I don't know, like That's Kerp or something. Like, no, the other one. I was gonna say I met that fool. Who are you talking about? I'm talking about the one that has the raspy voice. Oh, Georgie, Uncle Pill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh so yeah. You know what he's doing now? Did I haven't even caught you up to speed with him? So fucking, uh, he got discovered by that Channel Five guy, Andrew Callahan. Really? Yeah, he got discovered by him, and fucking, uh, he ended up going on tour with Channel Five when they did the whole Channel Five live tour going across the whole U.S. He he came out on every single night. And fucking closed every show for him. He would perform two songs to end the show. And fucking, uh, yeah, they paid him a good amount. And he's um, now he's behind the camera for Channel 5. So he's, like, recording and working with Andrew directly. But, yeah, he actually, that motherfucker kept grinding and kept doing his thing. And, you know, all those guys, Crip Mac and all China Mac, all those guys, he's met all those fools. Like, he's been fucking out there. No and, Custer shit. Yeah, he drives around in a car that he calls the bucket, and he just lets people graffiti it fucking in every city that he goes into. And uh, he lets kids skateboard off of the shit. And he sets up, like, ramps and takes pictures. And, like, yeah, he's, like, he's based in San Diego, I think. But, um, but yeah, he goes fucking city to city and fucking is doing that shit. He's told, and it's funny, though, because I asked him, I was like, can you help me out? Because I put out an album. Uh, with this band called Fluids, I was telling you about it. I put out this album with them doing hip hop shit, you know, a whole like different thing because they're a death metal band. But they asked me, "Hey, you want to rap on this?" And they got me back into hip hop. I was like, "Fuck!" I thought I was done, but you know, I'll do it now. I have the means. I did this album with them. I reached out to him and I said, "Hey, dude, can you send this over to Andrew Callahan? Like, you know, see if dude will fucking give it a listen or get it to because I want to get it in the hands of Fontano." Um, the fucking Anthony Fontano, the guy that reviews all the shit with the needle drop on yeah. YouTube. And I asked him, I was like, can you do that? And he said, ah, Andrew's hella busy right now. He can't get that to him. And I'm like, you <laughs> motherfucker. Like, come on, dude. Help your boy out. We fucking, we used to, I used to crash on his couch and I was kicking down $100. I bled all over his motherfucking kitchen when I got blackout drunk off of Hennessy and broke my tablet with my fist after the Mystic Roots show when I tried to take down their speakers because I was so mad the cops didn't break it up, but they kept breaking up all of our shows. And I didn't Mystic realize, Roots? Like yeah, reggae? Yeah, the past with the marijuana guys. I tried to destroy their whole fucking show in Chico because they I we had got every single show we threw shut down at a point. Like it was the point it was at the point where like we would have like five rappers performing. The first two would go and then I was always like number three or some shit. And by the time I'm performing, they would just shut down the whole show because police would show up. And I was so mad because I can never get through more than one fucking song at a set. And then fucking I go to Mystic Roots show and fucking Mystic Roots is playing and no police are there. And and there I'm like 30 minutes go by. I'm like Mystic Roots. The police are going to show up. They didn't show up. And I just kept drinking more and more Hennessy. And I was so fucked. Up. <laughs> it was the chillest vibe too. everybody's smoking weed and chilling. I'm just getting more and more mad off the Hennessy. And I fucking I was like, fuck these white boy motherfuckers. I started running up and started trying to knock over their speakers. I got carried out by security. They threw me out the fucking gate and uh, and fucking then. Uh, yeah, I went back to Georgie or Uncle Pill's house and fucking broke my tablet and bled all over his kitchen. He had to wrap my hand up and I, I still have bits of glass in my fucking hand that like it scarred over. Like I'd probably need to get it removed out of my hand, but yeah, probably that was that was the Hennessy for you. You know that's Hennessy is good. Hen anything's possible. Yeah, anything's anything possible. is anything's possible. Yeah, anything. But yeah, you know, like that. Fuck, dude, I just went on a big ass tangent. I don't even know what the fuck we were talking about before we went on the initial tangent. That heme, bro. That privileged oh, heme. Get it? I mean, that privilege is daddy no you know what, i did you know what the new the new lick is now the privilege was the shit when i was a kid i'll tell you because it was a little bit more but the real deal now is that pure white hennessy have you ever had that the hennessy pure uh -uh. White? so i don't even drink liquor anymore they i don't either i only drink beers uh but in mexico they sell this fucking hennessy that you can only get in mexico and or like other countries and oh, see that Hennessy pure white and it comes in a fucking like clear bottle and it's like uh 
it's got a different shape to it and it's a very light colored Hennessy and it's because it's it's not aged as long as the sh the shit in the US and uh it costs about like people sell it for like 100 bucks a bottle you can get it in another country for like i think 30 to 50 bucks a bottle and usually yeah. they limit you with six bottles so when i went to mexico i came back i bought six you know and i like brought them back i drank a couple gifted a couple to my friends um but yeah fucking uh they are doing a limited edition run right now of Hennessy Pure White in the U.S., you can get it at Bebmo, and it's a hundred bucks for a fucking bottle of it. And it's a twenty fifth anniversary of Pure White, and it's the only time you're gonna be able to get this shit. Um, I wish I could say Pure White is smoother than regular Hennessy. It is not. It's it's like a more raw version of Hennessy. I would probably say, but it's hmm. good. It's good. I, I like it. I mean, I like Hennessy. Just the novelty of having it. I'm at right. a point where I can't drink Hennessy anymore. It just makes me yeah. so fucking violent and nauseous. <laughs> violent and nauseous. Yeah. Like, and I'll, I will drink it. Like, it, uh, if we went down to Texas, I would buy a bottle of Hennessy and drink it with y'all. But. Ugh. I'd yeah, rather have not, tequila than Hennessy. No, I can't do tequila. But I, I fucking. I, we better not encounter any ops. If I'm down there off the Hennessy, that's what I'm saying. No if ops. Want, if you want me visible on a positive vibe, I will. I'll drink fucking uh, Underberg with you, and fucking beers, and uh, I'll I'll lace you up on the Underberg next week when I get some. I'm getting some on Saturday, but uh, you ever heard of that? That shit. Uh. -uh. I'll show you it next week on the show, but uh, it's digestive bitters. You ever ordered a digestive at a restaurant? <laughs> Some restaurants will give you a little shot of something. It's called a cordial or a digestive, mm -hmm. it, um, mm -hmm. like a dessert drink, and it kind of helps you digest your meal. Yeah, um, that's why they got mints at the counter. You're, I'm going to put you on the Underberg hype. Um, start going on fucking Amazon and buying this shit. I'll send you the link and everything. Uh, if you go on Underberg.com, it's these tiny little bottles that have a paper wrap around the top, and they have a green cap, right? And fucking you rip off the paper. You, it's you, it's like a foreskin. You know, you peel it back <laughs> and you fucking you take the cap off and you take a shot and you do it every night after your last meal. You will never get indigestion. You will never get a stomach ache after your meal. You'll never feel too full. And fucking oh. if you have any stomach pain or, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night. Oh, I got a stomach ache. I eat too much butter, too much cheese, whatever the fuck. You pop a fucking Nunderberg. It'll make that shit go away like fucking that, dude. It's it's the fucking craziest shit. I when Weird. I was down there with fluids, fucking, um, they were drinking that shit. And they put me on the Underberg. Huh? Yeah, uh, yeah. You are a Underberg guy, and the coolest thing is the caps. So you save all the caps, the little green cap. Save all your caps. It's like Marlboro Miles. You fucking. So are, so we're planning to do this more, right? We're doing this every week, Daddy. Yeah, maybe we, we should times. talk. I I'm open to it. Super open to it. Yeah, we're starting. Fuck yeah. Um, what's it called? Next week we're starting the Three Daddy Podcast as well for everybody watching. Uh, Three Daddy Podcast is going to be just like this, except instead of being death metal focused, we're going to be talking about all sorts of different shit. Um, pretty much open table. So you know, all you kind of like what we've done today. Gold, I would say a little bit different. Like we're, we're still my my ADHD is on point. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good, have... dude. It'll be uh, uh, yeah. Um. But I, I gotta hit the hay. I gotta be up at nice five thirty in the morning. Oh shit. Yeah. It was an absolute pleasure having you on here, brother. Um, Definitely. Uh, yeah. We'll uh we'll be getting in touch fucking sometime next week for uh to continue the conversation, and uh, thank you so much for thank joining. You for, um, inviting me, like for real, like, this yeah. is cool. Yeah, I got. I'm like, 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 I it just sounds like over dramatic or like I'm being like, like, like you know, like just because of the camera. But no, like this is actually really cool. Yeah, you guys, like, this is a cool experience. Like, in a sense of like, yeah. I'm uh, I I I like this. It's a cool experience. All right, before Fuck you get yeah. off, Thank though, you, you got to show your wiener.
(laughs) 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 Fucking Bob the Gecko. Yep, everybody, (laughs) Bob the Gecko. Follow him on his Instagram. That is his. uh, That's his uh, thing right there at Terror Bear. Um, Yeah, that's fucking follow Bob the Gecko, man. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Bob the Gecko. Salute, Bob the Gecko. Yeah, man. But fuck, what was I saying? That fucking Underberg dude is fucking. Yeah, I'm actually very interested because I I'm like I like drinking kombucha and that's good for digestive health, yes. health and uh, shit like that. Oh yeah, no, you're gonna you're gonna fucking love Underberg brother. I'm telling you that shit. I just ordered um for fifty bucks you get thirty of them. So see, that's uh, good. Yeah, it's a decent decent price, like a buck seventy five per. Um, they sell them on Amazon. They even have smaller packs if you want to just sample them out. Um, fucking god damn it! I'll send you your first pack of Underberg. I'll send you a little like six pack or something so you could. I would definitely first. use that because yeah. I could use something like that in my life. It's an it's something like it it has turned into something that like I just have to keep on hand. But what I was saying about the caps, so you keep these fucking caps, and then they turn into fucking uh, prizes. Like you, you bring them, you trade them in for prizes on the Underberg. Oh, what website. the fuck? Yeah, you can get like Underberg glass, like a special glass to drink your Underberg out of. They have a Underberg truck. Um, what? It's a, like a model truck that's all Underberg, like a big ass model truck, and that thing's like ten thousand caps. Like you save every single green cap, and you can trade them in. Fucking uh, damn. And, uh, but yeah, that's pretty legit have... actually, because there isn't a whole lot of stuff like that anymore. Oh yeah, dude. It's fuck. You know who uh, drinks a lot of this shit too is uh, Amana Marth. Really? Yeah, those guys fucking are like sponsored by Underberg. Huh. That's pretty wild. Yeah, I'll show you what it looks like right here. Um, let me see. They're amazing, dude. This is like the coolest shit right here. So that's oh Uderberg. shit. That's- but yeah, no, you fucking. You just fucking, drink it. You, dude, you, you, you can just be drinking them all night. Like you, you just fucking, you rip, you rip the little paper off the top. You open it up, and you down it, and it's like a little shot. It's like a little two ounce fucking glass bottle. And it's just for like, if you're like full or like. Yeah, if so you have after, indigestion or something, you, you can do it after every meal. Just it says literally after a good meal to feel bright. And here's the cool thing about it: it's also forty four percent alcohol. Oh, so you get cool. a little buzz. Yeah, the in the flavor. I'll tell you this: so you ever drink Jaeger? Oh yeah, I love Jaeger. It's so it's similar to Jaeger, but a lot more spicy and less okay. uh, less sweet, and the feeling. Like, all right, so I was out there. Uh, we had a very rich, you know, really good dinner and everything. And I had the Underberg. I put it in my pocket, and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll drink this thing. Because I hadn't had it before. And I, I was like, oh, yeah. Like, I, I was familiar with it. I heard of it. But I was like, you know, I'm, I'm a weird guy when it comes to, like, pu- you know. New things. New stuff. Yeah, with new stuff yeah. in my stomach. Like, I, I don't, know, don't know how my stomach's going to react. I don't react well to cheese, a lot of butter, garlic, that shit. It fucks me up. Right. But, um, so I had this and I was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to save this if I need it. And I put it in my pocket, had a very rich French dinner, a lot of butter, bread, all that stuff. Um, S cargo was fucking awesome. But so fucking I uh, I go to sleep. Yeah, I had a couple beers too. go to in cocktails. I go to sleep, wake up at 5 a.m. Stomach ache. And I go, fuck, dude, like my fucking stomach's yeah. fucked up. I'm in a different place. I still had the Underberg in my pocket. I said, fuck it. Yeah, I'm going to fucking drink this thing right now. I rip it open, pop the top, knock it down. It felt like a fucking ball of, like, warmth covering my entire throat, going down, covering, coating my entire stomach. All of my stomach pain disappeared fucking immediately. It coated my what? stomach and all the pain went away. And I felt I felt like so fucking good. sorcery. I went right back to sleep. What? Yeah. That's fucking insane. It's bro. Uderberg. I need to try this. I need, yeah, I need to try this. Yeah, I need to try this. Because 
I could definitely use something like that. Have I ever ordered you something from Amazon? Uh, I don't know. I don't think I have. I think I sent you a fucking. I'm, I'm oh. I don't know what made me just think of this. Hmm. We talked about this movie not that long ago, and I don't know if I ever told you that I saw it. Mm -mm. They clone Tyrone? No, you talked about this movie. I haven't seen it. I thought you were the one that told me to watch it. No, you told me I need to watch it a while ago, and I still haven't seen it yet. Oh, fuck. I could have swore you said to watch that shit. That's crazy. That's called marijuana memory as I get more weed. Fuck, the Underberg ain't cheap. No? I thought it was like six for this much. It's well it's it's reasonably priced. I mean, for a hundred bucks you get fucking sixty. For fifty three yes. bucks you get fifty. Or no, you get thirty. And then for twenty five bucks you get twelve. So I'll send you, and then for ten bucks you get three. So it's like fuck, you spend fucking. God damn it! Just because I love you, I'm sending you twelve Underbergs. Right. And it work real good, bro. Why would I be sending you something that didn't? Work I guess you're right. Yeah. Out? Yeah, you're right. You're right. This shit is. You're gonna be like. You're gonna instantly be ordering more. You're probably gonna knock down these twelve in like fucking two nights. Like it's. It's I'm excited. I I'm, I'm excited to try it. I might even like I might even save the first one for like the next time we record. Damn, and I'll just damn. drink yes, it then. Yes. I'll save the first one for that. Like I'll I'll eat a big meal. I might maybe I won't even drink beer. Or I'll drink beer and eat a meal. Oh yeah, it's... you can no, you can drink beer with your Uber. It'll it'll actually help you with the beer. Really? Yeah, it'll help you digest the beer. Okay. I wish I had an Unterberg right now. I feel bloated as shit. I, I'd fucking. I, would, <laughs> I mine, feel mine bloated. Don't come until Saturday. <laughs> but I fucking need. Hold on. Where where the fuck is my my dirt rips? Um, pirate ship. I have your address in my pirate ship. I don't want to say it. we're live on a podcast right now. I don't want to. Truth, say, yeah. Put your shit on blast, but. But, but, but yeah, man, fucking this shit is amazing, dude. I fucking love Underberg. I'm excited. I'm definitely excited to try this. It's delicious. I'd put That's it crazy. I'd, I've never heard of it before. Oh, man. Let me see your logo. Underberg. I'm gonna have to really test this shit out. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna, to, you're gonna eat some fucked up shit and then <laughs> Yeah. Like I'm gonna I had some chili last night and I didn't feel like it was spicy enough and I put way too much ghost pepper hot sauce on it to make it spicy. And like that would be that's just the kind of thing I would do to need that. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, oh I put that. way too much hot sauce on my dinner, but I still ate it anyways because I'm an idiot and I liked it. That that's me in a yeah. fucking nutshell. Yeah. I do it all the fucking time. I like dang it, I made it too spicy again. Yep. I am I am fucking notorious for doing that, dude. I've become obsessed with hot sauces lately. <sighs> I think I got a scorpion pepper, Carolina Reaper, and a ghost pepper. Holy Hot fuck. Sauce. Huh. That's you've eaten that shit? Yeah, oh yeah. You should do it I live buy... on the fucking podcast. Like that's so, the only time you should do that. I uh I get uh like the chicken patties, right? But I get the plain ones. I don't get the spicy ones because I like to control how spicy they are. Yeah. <clears throat> and what I'll do is I'll put like one of those hot sauces on there and then I'll coat it with Chick-fil-A sauce so that it like doesn't dumb it down too much to where the spiciness is like, you know what I mean? It kind of neutralizer. 
is a yes. Chick-fil-A sauce. Yes, you can do it with ranch too, but ranch kind of has that like tanginess a little bit. Yeah. That like still keeps the spiciness there for some reason. I don't know. Chick-fil-A sauce, maybe maybe I'm just a weird a weird nerd about it, but Chick-fil-A sauce is bomb, especially with hot sauce. Oh yeah, Chick-fil-A sauce is fucking <coughs> I I could put that shit on anything. Oh, easily. I could even Um side topic I wanted to bring this up because I showed this to you earlier, and I know you're a fan of this band. Oh, yeah. I already know what you're pulling out. The Fulci tape? Yes. Fulci at, recorded at Morris Sound. Have you yes. listened to it yet? Yes. Does it sound different? Uh, If you ask me, I think it's... Because I am, like, deep as fuck with Fulci. Like, I know Fulci. Like, I, I think it sound sounds good? pretty damn good. Does it sound better? I think so. I mean, the whole the whole session is just a an amalgamation of different Fulci songs. And what's cool is they like, because I'm a nerd, it had the plastic wrap on it, but they put the more sound like actual sticker on there with the phone number and shit. It it is online. Yeah. Uh, so I took the I took the sticker off the plastic wrap and just put it on the case. Okay. But even inside the case, like in the J card, they did the Morris sound thing and fucking where is it? There it is. There's the phone number of the studio. Oh, really? I'm going to call. Yes. Phone. That's what we did. We like I was trying to figure out, like, is this really the phone number? And yeah, it is because, yeah, we we called it. Why don't we call them right now? I mean, we could. It's like fucking I mean, 3 a.m. over there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's all on Bandcamp. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah, God. it's all on Bandcamp. So, like, it's not anything, like, that nobody can get. Okay. You okay. know what I mean? I'll listen to it. Yeah, because I've listened to all. I know all of these songs very well. Yeah. And, I do uh, love that uh, Lonely Hearts is on there. Yeah, that was a good song. That uh, Split yeah. with Fluids. I fucking, yeah. I got a copy of that. This is a really, really good tape. And the fact that it was recorded where some of the most classic death metal records were recorded is amazing. They had some flack, didn't they, like a year ago? Who? People were talking shit about Morris Sound because they said, oh, they recorded a fucking, like, neo-Nazi band in fucking 1998. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. They recorded a guy who became a Nazi 20 years later and some stupid yeah, shit. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, they definitely gave us some of the best death metal records. Yeah, death recorded there. Equinox fucking recorded at uh, Morris Sound. That fucking final album. Fucking ob- that, that didn't obituary, obituary, Cannibal Corpse, obituary, Deicide. Morbid Angel. Morbid Angel. All the best death Flesh metal seller. bands. <laughs> that would be sick. That would, that be, would sick. be sick. I don't even want to know how much it costs to record at Morrison. Oh my god, way more than Flesh Seller has. <laughs> yeah. fucking no, this is the track list on this is pretty fucking incredible, actually. Now that I have it opened and looking at looking at it, it's a it's a very good combination of everything Fulci has to offer. Voodoo Gore Ritual, Tomb, Apocalypse Zombie, fucking okay. So my favorite songs off this one are gonna be fucking eye full of maggots um matul yeah. tribal cult is my number one favorite fulci song and it's i like it's tropical sun oh tropical sun it's not on this website it's not yeah on tropical oh, sun wait, is yeah, yeah, the yeah, second yeah. one Gore ritual tropical sun yeah that, yeah those two those two when i blue saw inferno those, i'm not gonna lie i was kind of bummed out i fucking went uh i went to see fulci you live. did see fulci didn't you yeah i did see him <sighs> But I, I went there. I actually gave Dome a hug. I fucking, uh, I went there. I was like, dude, what's up? I fucking nerded out for a second. I was like, so happy to see you here. Guy looked like super exhausted. Those, those poor yeah. guys. They've been in a van touring their asses off and just came up, up from Mexico. And, uh, I was like, how are you? He said, uh, we're happy to be playing here. And I'm like, you're fucking tired as shit. I could see it. And, you know, they looked exhausted. But, um, those guys are built different, man. They too are hard, you know. And, yeah. You know, 
And yeah. I fucking, uh, yeah, I talked to them for a second. I bought all their fucking merch. I tipped them 100 bucks at the merch table. to, And I I told them, I was like, tell Dome to buy some uh, KFC with it because he loves KFC. That's like his favorite shit. And then uh, their merch dude, he threw me a pair of socks. He, he was like, hey, man, thank you. Like, holy shit. And I fucking, uh, yeah, I talked to him for a second. But my nephew, I bought him the jersey that they were selling. They were selling this badass, bulgy, like, uh, hockey jersey. Yeah. And uh, fuck, my nephew, though, it was fucking getting close to midnight. And he was like, all right, I'm ready to go now. And I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, they hadn't even played Matul Tribal Colt. They were halfway through their set. And uh, I, like, didn't want to miss Fulci. And yeah, you don't leave during a Fulci set. We left because he, you know, ah. he's, he's 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 a kid. He, he had to get home. Yeah, right that's now. fair. That's I fair. Know. I'm like, I'm not going to. If it was if it was like me or something, I, I wouldn't leave. I Well, I invited <laughs> him and I didn't want to make him feel uncomfortable. That's his thing. Like, right. If, if the second right. he's like, let's go. I'm like, all right, dude, we'll go. But um, if Fulci comes back, I'm going again, and I'm not leaving next time because I yeah. fucking wanted to hear the fucking dun 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 yeah dun 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 dun, dun. that shit slapped so hard and uh, I yeah, do love Fulci. Yeah. I was no I... this having this tape is a very very cool thing. I think yeah. Uh, I did get fun. this. I did this. Get this from Maggot Stomp, and I did get this. Uh, I got the Where the Vile Things Are uh, catalog magazine that he just recently did. Uh, there's a uh, some interviews in here, and it's actually really fucking cool. He called it. He called it a uh, a light bathroom read, a light real quick poop read. Oh yeah, but to poop. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. I, I was like, oh, I do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't read so, it when I poop though. No, I'm a scroller. But yeah, this scroll. reading reading is definitely uh you know a thing of the old days. I used to read. You know, when I was younger, when I was a kid, but that's when like books were entertaining to me. If I had something like this to read all the time, this is what I'd be reading. Comic books, you know, bring comic books in there. Oh dude, so I just fucking beat and I like I know it's a side topic. It's not death metal, really, but I just beat Spider Man two, like yeah, like completely. The Miles Morales yeah. one. The no, the new one, Spider Man two, like. Oh really? You play as both Spider Men in the game, like you. Oh shit! You're Peter Parker, Miles Morales, Venom is the fucking enemy in it, and fucking Peter gets the symbiote. The symbiote gets involved. I'm not spoiling much. I mean, that's all in the trailer, but like, damn, he gets the suit. He starts being a dick, just like in the fucking comics and shit. Like what? Yeah. Like it's dude. It's uh, fucking, I, I played it. All right. So I got the game like a week ago and fucking 35 hours later, I platinumed it and did every single thing there was to do in it. And I don't do that with video games anymore. Yeah. When I get Call of Duty, I'll play it. I'll sh play a death match here and there. Maybe I'll nerd out for like a day and play like four hours or something if I have the opportunity to now that I have a kid. But like this game, I straight up told my wife, I'm like, let me play Spider-Man this weekend. And I fucking played it nonstop for fucking two days. And fucking, uh, yeah, dude, I did everything you can do in that game and it was fucking awesome. But it got me, and speaking of comics... It got me like, fuck, I never really read Spider-Man comics. I'd read like a comic here or there. They're great. Or like something. I found this website, um, and I, I don't know if I'm promoting pirating, but there's a website that I found that has every single fucking like collection of Spider-Man comics. It has Ultimate Spider-Man, oh, shit, Spider-Man, all this shit, and I have a tablet. So I fucking went on there, and I fucking got all these Spider-Man comics, like all of them, and fucking now I can just read them all on my fucking tablet and, and Damn. They're all collected completely. Like they have the full, like fucking amazing Spider-Man, like going all the way back to the original. And then they have all the, like all the graphic novels, like all that shit, the omnibuses and that. Kind yeah. Of shit. And I got, I have a lot of the, uh, I have a lot of the Spider-Man Deadpool graphic novels. Yeah, dude, I have, I have that. I have fucking, I actually have that physically. 
I really yeah. like the Marvel Zombies. I have the complete collection of those. Fucking Marvel Zombies was a badass fucking comic. Marvel is just really great. Yeah, they I mean, really comparatively to like, in my opinion, to DC, I when it comes to DC, I really only like Batman. No. You gotta you gotta take a step back there, puppy. I got Batman I, is I, pretty I, dope. I beg to differ. Because DC Comics have much Marvel Comics have more fan service and like, oh, that's a cool mix up or that's a cool universe thing or like that, you know, this different universe type shit. It has a lot more like flashy shit going on and action sequences and like things where you go, oh, fuck, like that's a thing like R rated Punisher, yeah. you know, Punisher Max, like all that cool shit they do or Deadpool Max or, you know, like or de crossover like they do a lot of that. But right when it comes down to it. DC has the fucking best fucking like stories. Like when I'm reading a DC comic series, it doesn't matter what it is. You can you can read fucking um true. You can read Batman, you can read the Robin standalone comics, you could read fucking Aquaman. Aquaman who was a corny ass and and there was a run that they did Aquaman New 52 and I I feel, always felt the same way. I hate the the Justice League TV show and like the, it was just boring to me. It, it it wasn't that engaging. But DC has a mature story and a mature take on all this shit that it does the shit. It's like the Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad of comic books and Marvel is like the fucking cartoon. I could see that. Shit. I could like, see that. They literally like when they did New Fifty Two Aquaman. That was when Aquaman like made his big comeback in the comics before, way before they did the movie. This was like two thousand thirteen, uh, two thousand twelve, two thousand twelve. They did the New Fifty Two Aquaman, and I just happened to be buying comics at that time. I was going regularly to the comic book store. I used to be a comic nerd. I used to go every week, and fucking I. They had this new Aquaman. And people were like, "It's actually pretty good," and I checked it out. And like the first issue, like there are these truckers or they're no, not truckers. There are these guys like stealing a big rig, like a bunch of bad guys. And fucking Aquaman is just standing in the middle of the road. They're like, what the fuck is he going to do? Talk to fish like he's not going to do shit. And fucking Aquaman yeah. does some badass shit and fucks him up. And then like it, it's <laughs> like they just like flip that whole thing upside down, you know, like how people shit on Aquaman and like made him. Super yeah. Badass. And like. <clears throat> that was dope. DC is pretty cool. That's just I'm a big Batman fan. Yeah. When it comes yeah. to DC. Oh, Batman. That was when they did the fucking Court of Owls. Was that when they did that new fifty two? And I don't know if you've read that series, but there's like a secret society that's fucking watching Batman and the Joker fucking oh! cuts his face off. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude. I have read that. Yeah, the Court of Owls. That fucking was the new. F that was when DC had like a big renaissance with everything. And I mean, wasn't that were, like the the bat who laughs too? Uh, that was after. That was when they okay. did. Fuck, you want to see something funny? Huh? Sealed, fucking right here. Oh shit! The Batman who laughs, and this was, uh, I believe, this was from Dark Knight's Metal. Because they did like a, yeah. like a death metal like fucking. And there's thing. even a actual record that you can buy. I'm gonna open this fucking motherfucker right here live. That's live. unopened. It's it's plastic sealed in the plastic. Oh shit! And some things were meant to be opened. Dirt rips. Truth, buddy. truth, truth. Fuck! I can't open it. Oh <laughs> shit! The plastic is like fucking shrunk even more because it's been sitting here for so long. But yeah, no, dude, I fuck, I'm all about it, dude. Like, comics. I love Batman. We've never, I can't believe we've never talked about this shit. So, okay, I actually read one, uh, a graphic novel that I just recently bought this year in one day on this trip. What was it? The Last Ronin. I haven't, I haven't heard of that. I've heard of it, but it's I the Ninja heard. Turtles comic. Oh, okay, okay. It's the one. It's the one where there's only one Ninja Turtle left, and all the other ones in Master Splinter were killed. Oh shit! And it's pretty it's fucking. Badass. It's pretty fucking good. I finished it in a day. 
All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna read that this weekend. And it's I'll, really good. I'll give you my book report on it next week. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. Me being a big turtle nerd, I got to the end of it and I like I wanted to tear up, but I was like in public, so I had to thug that shit out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was on an airplane, I had to thug it it's out. That sad, huh? Dude, I'm a I'm a huge Ninja Turtles nerd. So oh, I love Ninja Turtles too, dude. Reading how, it was just kind of like very movie? bittersweet. It was very bittersweet. Yeah, I I want to read that bad now. Yeah, it was good. It's like a sad, very good. It's like a Someone actually movie. came up to me in my terminal and they were like, "That is such a good book." And there, if there's one thing I like. <laughs> Is when I have a graphic novel and someone returns refers to it as a book, then I feel like an adult. You know what I mean? <laughs> like guy came up and he's like, "That is such a good book," and I was like, "Thank you for not calling it a comic." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I'm I'm an adult. I can still read this stuff and be an adult. I love how like graphic novels you can get through them quickly too. Like I I read yeah. books too. Like I read Tom Clancy and shit like that. But like when I read those, they fucking sometimes they just take fucking for ever to get through and they drag on eight, 800 pages of fucking yep you know like there are parts where i'm just like fuck is this gonna be over and and uh graphic novels like i never have that hang up like i fucking read okay do you like star wars i love star wars if you like star wars now how did you feel about the the prequels uh like one two and three yeah you like phantom menace think they could have been better um yeah probably i feel like there was a lot of unnecessary shit in there so there was this dude <clears throat> that was like 13 or 14 when that shit came out and he was a huge star wars fan and he saw it and he was super disappointed and what he did was he fucking created he instead of fucking just being mad and hating on it he said, I'm going to create my own fucking universe that's doper than Star Wars and kind of like similar to it, though. So he created this whole fucking universe in his free time as he grew up and became an adult. And then he started getting into comics. And then the fucking guy had a kid. And he said, you know what? I want to make a comic book in this universe that I fucking created. But the theme is going to be about being becoming a new parent. And fucking... That's how Saga was made. And have you ever heard of Saga? No. Oh man. Fucking this shit. I'm going to I'm going to share it right here. Dude, I'm I've so been doing so much uh, I hate to say it. Well, I don't hate to say it, but the best way to put it is I've been doing so much fucking nerdy shit lately. It's not even funny. You so need, I'm I am like fully invested right now. You need to get Saga like ASAP. Get Saga. Uh, they have a they have a big collection of it <clears throat> um i'm gonna show you fuck add image they have a full collection of like issues one through 56 of fucking saga but this is saga right here fuck it's like kind of low quality um so these two fucking people right here um they're both from different fucking armies in this fucking constant battle that is happening. The guy with the horns is from the moon. And then the chick with the wings is from like the planet. And they have been killing each other for fucking hundreds of years. Just like killing each other like crazy. And then fucking these two end up falling in love. And having this fucking baby. That you can see that she's holding. And right. fucking everybody is trying to fucking kill them. Because they're fucking like it's not they're basically not, not traitors to happen. Yeah, they're both traitors and fucking it is the number one priority of like the fucking prince. There's a robot prince that's after them who's fucking his head is a TV and fucking it is it's violent. And what the what the guy said when he made it was that he wanted to fucking do everything that you fucking could not do because they asked are you ever going to make it a tv series right he said it's never going to be a tv series because i did everything that you would not be allowed to do in a tv show yes. in this shit and the budget for this world would just be fucking crazy but it's it's this crazy fucking story that just goes on and on and on about fucking and it's told from the perspective of the baby 
So like, oh shit, it's, it's narrated like my mom and dad loved each other. Da da da. Like it, you know, like it fucking. It's narrated by the baby, like talking about, and then my grandparents came into the picture. Like just shit like that happens. It's so good, dude. It's so fucking dope. Fuck. And I, I'm gonna have to I, check that out. I started reading it when it first came out, and I think I have issue one somewhere in storage because I, I, I started buying it when it came out. And uh, because this dude told me like at the comic book shop when it it was like 2013, I think, when the first issue came out and he was like, you like Star Wars, dude. And I'm like, yeah, I like Star Wars. And I would buy anything, you know, that the guy would recommend. He was like, read this saga shit. It's going to be it's going to be a big fucking comic. And it is. It's like one of the dopest ones. They fucking did 56 issues. And then they took like a two year hiatus. They took a break and they're back to it. Now they're at like issue 63 or something. So when Damn. they get to like issue 74, they're going to put out book four. They have book one, two, and three, and then they have a collection of everything. But um, fucking check out Saga, dude. It's so fucking I'm in. Lucky. You have to read yeah, it. Yeah, I'm anyway. definitely you in. I need something new to read right now anyways. You're going to love it. It You're 100%. Like, and, and being a parent, too, like that's the other thing. Like. I didn't really relate with that so much when I was a kid or when I was younger and I read it. But now that I'm an adult and I have a kid too, it fucking yeah. makes it like mean so much more too. And it's just like, Oh my God. Fuck. Fuck I'm going to have to get that one. Yeah, dude. It's, you can get it on, uh, that motherfucker. Probably Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Saga collection. They have fuck. I wouldn't get the volumes. What's the compend? How much is in the compendium? Yeah, that's always the way to go with something that's kind of like long like that. Yeah. yeah. So if you get Saga Compendium, it's 35 bucks and it has fucking issues one through 54. Fuck yeah. So it has like fucking everything. You, yeah, everything you need to fucking basically so, catch you up to speed. I say I've been doing a lot of nerdy shit lately, right? Yeah. So we we talked about Shutter last time a little bit. Yes. So I watch I we just had Halloween and I've been kind of like lately watching a lot of horror movies. So I kind of delved into that recently. And there's a couple couple I wanted to bring up that I haven't. There's some things that I totally didn't even realize. Like the first Saw movie, I just recently watched that again for the first time in forever. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's so weird you say that. So I fuck, It takes I place fucking, in one place. I fucking I actually just fucking uh I just watched that again too this Christmas or this Christmas, this Halloween because so It's a good day, one. So the way that my job works is like I have hella downtime. I'm on the road throughout the day, but right. sometimes I have like a couple hours of downtime. And I went to the theater. The ex, the new Exorcist is what I wanted to see, but it wasn't out yet. So mm. I went to the theater, and and the Saw Ten was fucking playing. And uh, have you have you seen that yet? No, but I know it takes place after the first one. Yeah, it takes place in between one and two. Yeah. And I didn't know that though. Like I just, I was just like, ah, Saw. Yeah, 10, the way it's X. titled is like saw like whatever you know saw x you know so yeah, yeah i was like what the fuck so I, I went in i was like i'm gonna watch this you know i go in there fucking i'm like it's me and like two other people in the theater and i haven't watched a like a gore porn movie in fucking years you know and it was bad like the first like trap that he does in it it's not real he's like fantasizing it but like he gives a guy a dial in his left hand and his hand is stuck in a machine on the right hand and he tells him, if you want to live, you have to turn the dial all the way to five notches. So the guy turns the first notch and psh, his fucking thumb just snaps up directly. And fucking the second notch, psh, his fucking index finger just snaps up. Oh, and just breaking all his fingers. Oh, it was, dude. Oh. And as soon as it happened, I'm in the theater and I went, oh. Like I'm, I'm like being a little bitch in the back, and like the people in the front, are like what the fuck is wrong with this guy? And I'm just like, I can't. Why did I walk into like what? I should have known what I was getting into. Um, so I, I just think it's so funny though too, because like, like, like I said, that first movie, they, they made, they made how many of those movies? 
They made 10. Now they're they made 10. So there's 10 of them. And it literally started by making a movie that takes place in basically one place. Yeah. Well, like no, they probably place, spent their it took it's it, a, it's a it was in many I mean but the majority of the first film is in that bathroom in that bathroom yeah and and they probably bad. spent the majority of their budget on Danny Glover spoiler alert everybody we're spoiling everything from this point on yeah if, we're talking if about you saw. haven't seen saw at this point then yeah, you're then you should it's your be own fault this shit. yeah if you haven't your seen own saw at this point you're a bitch yeah for real that's that's one that I watched. That one is a great movie. Like I I totally forgot how great the first Saw is. It actually is very good. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Um, the first Saw, fucking. Oh God. It you know it was kind of hard to watch. I'm not gonna lie. Like after going back to it, and I you know what made me sick the most watching it. Hmm. I was like when I was a kid, I watched this movie like three times, and I wasn't phased by it at all when I was like thirteen. And now I'm like 30 and I'm like, oh my God, I watched this with no problem. Like, what the fuck was wrong with me when I was like 13? Yeah. You know, like I, I was so desensitized to it back then. And now I'm like, oh, like, I don't You know what, though? It's weird because I can watch like real gore videos now and I don't give a fuck. But then when I watch like that kind of shit, I'm like, ooh, like the fucking the guy that's caught. I thought I thought parts of it were stupid. The part where the guy's like in the barbed wire room and he's like, you have three minutes to climb out. And the guy literally yeah. just starts going. Oh, yeah. Like, Why did, bro, that's not how you just start out. spazzing out. No one's going to do that. No, you're just going to no. lay there or they're going to fucking yeah. try and work their way out. Like that was just low effort by the this part. The, the gore in it is great, though. Oh yeah, it's good. It's got good gore. Um, the fact that Jigsaw is just laying there the whole fucking time at the end, the big twist, that shit yeah. was super fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, I fucking love. Yeah, that that's part. a good one. Uh, there's a couple that I watched for this Halloween, and uh, since we're since we talked about the uh, the beginning of Saw, uh, a sequel I watched, uh, Hellbound, Hellraiser two. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's, Sign- that's better significantly than better than Hellraiser. I wanna. All right, hold on there. I think it's better than the first one. I would. I wouldn't say significantly though. I mean. All right. Here's. If you think about it. There's more depth to the story in the second one when as you opposed watch to the it, first. Yeah, but Hellraiser one is a classic in its own. <laughs> like Hellraiser one is the movie you watch with a big group of people. Like I mean, you can watch that whole series. That's the best way to watch that. You watch, you watch yeah. it with people talking shit. You don't watch Hellraiser alone. If you watch Hellraiser alone, then you're a hard ass motherfucker. You're a bad motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You watch that shit by yourself. You like bad the, as fuck. Uh, the guy, the guy. What do they call him? The uh, clicker or some shit? What? What's that guy's name? They all have names. And in- yeah, they all have names. I never remember their names. With the guy, the guy with the jaw. He's like, yeah. He's all he's all coked out. Yeah. No, the second one is cool because it's like the guy trying to summon them. Yeah. And he like summons the mom from the first movie out of the mattress and she ends up taking him into the fucking world. And then like he becomes part of it and becomes one of them. And like. It's just fucking that's where the doctor he's all the doctor is in. Did you That's see That's like that mortician the, sample. Did you see the new Hellraiser? Like the Uh Hellraiser? yeah, I liked it. I liked, I liked it, it a lot too. I thought it, it was, was good. When the guy becomes the fucking, you know, one of them and fucking yeah. him up in the fucking they take him up into heaven at the end. I want to watch it again actually. That shit was great. That was good. The one good gore The one Hellraiser, I can't remember which one it is is uh I think it's the fourth one. But it's the one where the character is like a cop. Yes. And he yes, finds yes, the cube with the cop. I was just about to say that. Yep. And in the end, he ends up like killing himself, but he watches himself kill himself. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Like that he watches himself one. shoot himself or something like that. It's a good series. I don't get it. Dude, Hellraiser is so it, good. It, they all, yeah, different directors, different budgets. They're all good. It's all. It's a fucking good Clyde Barker set up a good universe. He set up a good uh a good basis for fucking movies and yeah. You know. 
Hellraiser Hellraiser is like one of those things where it's like you can it's hard to fuck it up. You know? Yeah. You gotta have it's a cult classic. You have the gore, you know, really yeah. you just bring You just have to have the gore and the fucking evil darkness of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love I mean it. that's I all it. that really is. It's a great fucking franchise. You gotta you gotta have somebody that's like attached by their skin to like hooks and chains and shit. Very underrated this year though. The the hype yeah. this year was really with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. I wanna say. And and I got wrapped up in the Texas Chainsaw hype. I bought the the four K UHD, watched it. I tried to watch the it newest with one? Yeah, uh, the original. Oh yeah. Yeah. I watched it with my wife and you know how far we made it? Um we made it all the way to the dinner table scene. Literally like the last ten minutes of the movie. And uh my wife was like, I can't, I don't wanna watch this shit. She was like, This shit's <laughs> Like this is fucked. It, this is wrong. This is just because you know at the by the time they get to the dinner table scene, the chick is just screaming her head off nonstop. Yeah. you know, and they're all going ah, and they're all laughing with her. It's the most chaotic part and anxiety yeah. producing part. And that whole movie, the thing I love about Texas Chainsaw, the original one, is that from the opening fucking scene, it builds your anxiety. And it's just constantly building your anxiety and making you feel yep. uneasy. Yep. And then there's yep. this big fucking rush. And then she runs away, jumps in the truck, gets off. But the way that she is at the end of it, totally out of it and all fucked up, is the way that you are as the viewer from all this yeah. chaos that you just went through. I will say that is that's probably one of the best uh, original, like, first movies. You know that, what I mean? That was the movie that that fucking uh established the tropes because there were yeah. no fucking tropes like i mean there were like you had what before that you had hitchcock with psycho and you had night of the living dead i think that came out before yeah. and then th there might be a couple other films but that was the one that you know really established fucking tropes and the last yeah. girl and fucking you know it was it was amazing man that shit was yeah, you can't you can't beat the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No, it's, it's such a. It good, is one of the greatest you know, horror films. It's like I don't look at head cheese the same fucking way after watching that, or like a slaughterhouse the same way after you know. Yeah. You know, fucking watching that, like fuck, it's real good. <laughs> you know the fucking <laughs> yeah. The fucking hitchhiker is such a weird motherfucker with his fucking his like face that's like two colors and he he fucking cuts his hand and the it's so good like i yeah it's funny because i appreciate it for all this shit and my wife she'd never seen it before and she was just like oh like like she was not feeling it she's not really a big horror movie fan but yeah yeah she was like weirded the fuck out by this movie and i'm like dude like it's real good <laughs> like that's honestly a, a perfect segue too Speaking of weird films, I'd brought this one up earlier. I'd never seen Killer Clowns until Halloween. Dude. Oh my god. It is not it's not a horror movie, is it? It's a comedy. It's a comedy. But when I was a It's kid, creepy. I would imagine when you're a kid and you see those fucking weird things. Scary creepy. The fuck creepy shit out of me. Creepy. Maybe. Yeah. So one I that's another movie that's coming back in a big way. Um that's getting a lot of love now. And when you go to um when I went to fucking Spirit this year, I don't know if you, you went to a Spirit Halloween store in your area. Did they have one? I didn't. Yeah, you, they did. I I didn't go though. You should you gotta go every year because this year they had the fucking clowns, like animatronics of the clowns that what? Look, look movie realistic. And they're like 200 bucks, dude. And they fucking, they move and they go, ah, ha, ha, ha. they do the shit from, they have the gun and everything. Yeah, dude. They have all of the clowns. You go that was a good, this. that was pretty good. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to lie. I liked it. So the best time to go to spirit is like fucking today or tomorrow if they still have it because usually they still have the spot running out for all on days. clearance yeah yeah you can buy those animatronics for like fucking a hundred bucks off like right now. yeah and yeah they had let they had that and they had texas chainsaw this year those were the two big ones dang movies that they did yeah they had killer clowns i i i don't know why i guess i assumed it was a horror movie because it was always considered it is that i it guess is a horror movie I, I i would say but it's more so i mean like, there is some gore 
for kids. There's a little bit of gore. The fucking shit out of kids. The cotton candy cocoons, bro. Yeah. And the fucking, uh, you know, the kids getting fucked up by clowns. That shit was fucking awesome. When the clowns just show up at the door. I mean, for for a child, that's terrifying. And then some people just right. have a fear of clowns, and that'll be terrifying yeah. for them. Yeah. You know. True. Yeah. Like that shit was hella fucking scary. And for me, I wouldn't watch that as a kid. I was terrified of that movie. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I hadn't seen it until, like I said, just the other day. But uh, it really wasn't that bad. You make me want to re-up my shutter talking about that. Dude, there's so much stuff on there that yeah. I want to watch. There's so many Fulci films. There's their creep show is pretty cool. Did you watch that In Search of Darkness yet? is that on there yeah in search of darkness part two watch that documentary it's like a fucking four i think it's like a four or six hour documentary um it is basically your map for all the shit that you want to watch on shutter because what they do is they they go over every single movie and do a quick little synopsis and show a couple fucked up scenes from each one and yeah. they go like this movie was great because they did this or because they did this, and it's you'll find out a, about a bunch of shit that you otherwise wouldn't have found out about on Shutter. Huh. So it's like a Shutter tutorial. It it is what it was made. I think I don't know if it was uh, funded by Shutter, but um, it has like Chris Jericho in it and like the Angry Video Game Nerd and like a whole bunch of like different oh, like, movie buff guys. And they just talk about how they love these films. And they're like, you know, just a bunch of movie buffs. And they get them all together. And Damn. They, they just interview them about these things. And, like, it was actually, I think it was originally produced as, like, a DVD, like, box set. In Search of Darkness 1, 2, and 3. And they kind of talk about how horror fucking, uh, you know, has progressed over the years. And, like, and like a lot of those flicks you won't find them on any other streaming service and you won't ever see a movie like them again. There's this one movie called mother's day and that's on shutter. Fucking, yeah. I won't even tell you what that fucking movie's about. Cause it is fucking terrible. Dang, but, but it's on shutter and it was from the eighties and they would never make a movie like that ever again. Yeah. See some of the best horror movies came out of the eighties. I feel like, yeah, it was a different time. You know, yeah, definitely for sure. Not sensitive to fucking the shit that people are sensitive to nowadays. Like, right. You know, or I mean, people were probably sensitive to it back then, but they just didn't fucking. It just know. is a different yeah. time, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, fucking. Uh, yeah. Check out that In Search of Darkness on there and that'll fuck. Fuck yeah. Do it. But yeah, man, you got to read Saga, though. You got to fucking. I, we're I'll have to get on that. Yeah. What What do we have any any. uh extra take backs or uh anything else i think i think we're good man we fucking we got a lot a lot of shit um everybody check out fucking flesh seller down Fuck in the yeah. fucking description motherfucking dirt riffs here is in a big ass band daddy and you you want to listen to this shit um it's fucking badass the flesh seller fucking single is fucking killer um and thank then, you and then, yeah, dude, I'm so stoked to see you finally doing some shit. Uh, thank you, thank you. We have a new you. podcast coming called the Three Daddy Podcast. Going to be starting sometime next fucking week. Um, Tear Bear, that motherfucker might be in on next week's Dirty Death. Who knows? Like that guy. It, it, you, I feel, I felt instant fucking chemistry tonight. Um, yes, that, that was, and that was very sporadic. We did not plan for Tear Bear to be on tonight's episode. No, but we had an idea he was going to be in the Three Daddy. So this. Uh, it was a pleasant surprise, the fucking level yes. of love and chemistry that we got going. So I fucking um, I want to sign off with Dirty Death tonight. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Fucking big shout out to my, my buddy Craw Daddy. I fucking love you, man. Um, Fuck also, yeah. Next, this upcoming Wednesday, uh, don't forget, we have the top 10 fucking albums of the year. Um, it can be albums, EPs, splits, whatever the fuck. Just bring 10 to the table of your favorite things that you got to listen to this year. And we are going to be getting in there with Mike Colby, Craw Daddy, motherfucking uh, Dirt Riffs here, me, and um, maybe even Lily White, depending on what he's doing. I know his leg's better now, so that's awesome. And then yeah. fucking uh, 
it maybe we'll get murder bar in this motherfucker and seed murder and a couple other you know of our our guys off the fucking internet so yeah super fucking stoked that we got this shit coming and uh yeah um anything you got for him dirt riffs fucking uh yeah, uh, just quick shout out real quick. I, I, like I said, uh, we were talking about I just got back from that trip. A lot of people uh, made that possible for me that uh, had they not have been there and been so helpful as as much as they were, uh, it, that that trip might not have happened for me this time around. And it, I had a fucking great time. Uh, listen to fucking Necrovision. Yes. If you're not listening to Necrovision, what are you doing with your life? Listen to Necrovision. Stop yeah. everything and listen to Necrovision. Re, re, refill your Shutter subscription. Watch some horror movies. Throw on some death metal records. There's plenty of good stuff out there. Fucking, uh, yeah. Listen to Necrovision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most important part, bro. Listen to Necrovision. Necrovision all day, daddy. Fuck yeah. All right. Good night. Peace.